The motors are running and the car starting to roll off of pit road now as we're about to get underway with the second time for the Cup Series and running the road course here at Indianapolis. Take a look at today's starting grid brought to you by Verizon. Up front, Tyler Reddick got his second pull. The 26-year-old out of Corning, California, joined Austin Sindrick on the front row, but also has joined Austin Sindrick as first-time winners in 2022. Yeah, back in row five, Todd Gilliland making his career best start inside the top 10. The North Carolina native excited to get on this road course. You see Denny Hamlin, big news this week, trying to bounce back. He'll be in row eight. Uh, behind him, Indiana's own Justin Haley inside row nine. A little bit further back in the lineup, Ross Chastain. He's already won at a road course this year at Coda earlier. And Kyle Larson will be on his outside, the reigning Cup Series champion. Yeah, we have an F1 racer in the field. Dan Kvyat back there in row 18. 110 F1 starts, three podiums in his career. He's jumped over and going to join the NASCAR crowd here this weekend. Indiana native. Chase Briscoe behind the wheel of the number 14, and we want to dial him up on the radio, Jeff. Hey, Chase, it's Burton, you got us? I got you, buddy. Man, we've watched you win an Xfinity race here, run very well in the Cup car also. Tell us what's so important, what's the most important part of this racetrack? Yeah, I think just trying to, to keep your tires underneath you. It seems like you definitely have a, quite a bit of fall off here, just keeping the rears. You know, not only from a forward drive standpoint, but even laterally. So it's not a, it's not a high speed corners where you really need that, but then you got to have it for the slow speed stuff to get back going. So hopefully uh, I can save them good today. You know, be there at the end of these long runs because it seems like that's typically where it pays off. Well, you have a lot of friends and family here today. How important would it be to you to win this race? Yeah, I mean, it, it'd mean everything. I mean, for me, I rank this right there with the Daytona 500. And just from a personal standpoint, I think every race car driver wants to win Indianapolis, but whenever it's your your home track, you got a ton of friends, the family here is even more special. Just the, the whole state of Indiana, I feel like it's find their Indiana drivers. So, be nothing cooler than uh, winning here. I've been able to win here once, but there was no fans here. So, definitely want to win there with fans and uh, be nothing better than winning in the Cup race. Well, good luck, man. We want to come to the party if you do win. Thank you. Yeah, it should be a good one. Appreciate it, guys. <laughs> it would definitely be a great one with Chase Briscoe and Rutledge Wood has been giving us a view of different areas around the racetrack and we've been very lucky so we will check in with Rutledge Wood and his city view currently at Sarah Fisher Racing. That's right. You know, Rick, I know y'all are about to take the green flag there at the big track, but here it's Speedway Indoor Karting owned by Sarah Fisher, former IndyCar driver and her husband. They've been racing all week long. We've seen team members, crew members here to get on the road course, even the oval slick track. If you're not lucky enough to qualify for one of the races at the big track, come on down here to Speedway just off of Main Street and you can do a little racing your own, buddy. Appreciate that, Rutledge. And our own Parker Kligerman yesterday was in a fire suit as the driver in the Xfinity Series. He's switched over and now on pit road for us, Parker. Right, Rick. And what does it mean to win here at Indy? Well, when you're named after four-time Indy 500 champion A.J. Foyt, which is a case for A.J. Allmendinger, after winning last year, he got to be a part of a photo yesterday morning with all these past legends and winners at Indy. He told me, I didn't feel like I belonged there. But when the photo got done, he went over to A.J. Foyt and said, can I have a personal photo? A.J. obliged. He told me that photo is the most meaningful personal photo he's had in his entire life. He'll start 20th today trying to make it back-to-back, -back, Dave. That's really cool, Parker. Hey, as good as Chase Elliott is on the road courses. Seven of his 17 wins have come on tracks like these. There's always something to learn. He leaves the pit box just now. His spotter tells him when you get over to the commitment line, I'm going to show you where the orange commitment box is because somebody blew that yesterday. And if you blow it today, you can be penalized and lose all the gain you've made on the day, Marty. Dave, the off track news a couple of weeks ago was Tyler Reddick leaving for 2311 racing from RCR. In 2024, Randall Burnett's crew chief told me after that there were certainly some hurt feelings in our race shop. But since then, we have really put it behind us as a race team. And he had a meeting with his team a few weeks ago and said, listen, we're all professionals. Some of you guys on this team were here when Kevin Harvick left, when Clint Boyer left. We can get past this as a race team. And since then, Rick, they have been very focused and they are terrific at road course races. Three of the last four races, Tyler Reddick has finished inside the top five on the pole for the second time today. Trying to get his second cup win. Definitely focused on getting back to victory lane for Tyler Reddick, but what will they have to do? They'll have to take on this 14-turn road course. And Junior, uh, Jeff, you guys take us around here. Junior, you're out there with Hinch yesterday. Yeah, getting down into turn one on restarts. They're going to be three, four, five wide, trying to funnel down into turn one, getting pushed off into the grass, a lot of contact. 
right through that corner. Also coming around turn four is going to be interesting. A blind apex there. Expect to see some guys miss that as well. Then it leads into turn seven, a heavy braking zone, an opportunity to pass. And then a much slower section. You've got to use a lot of patience through 10 and 11. That leads to 12. A lot of braking issues in 12 with sliding left front tires. Turn 14 on to the front straightaway. Really important. Possibly setting up passings, passings down into turn one. Well, you guys talked about the track itself. We just heard Dave report about that orange box coming to Pitt Road. So right here at the top of your screen, that's turn 13, a left-hander. But if you're going to come to Pitt Road, you're going to go swing in a little further. You're going to come down this area here. So if we zoom in a little bit, you're going to see that entry, and then it comes to the left. Go as fast as you want on that pit entry until pit road speed line. This is the yellow line right here. We have it every other racetrack. A lot of time can be gained getting onto pit road, Rick. Kind of the same way on exit. We know the very historic long pit lane here at Indianapolis. Well, when you leave, you cross that yellow line, and then it's hammered down as fast as you can go to the right of turn one. Inside that curbing, inside that white line, blend over in turn one. Too. This is a big conversation because these road courses, we expect to see a lot of green flag pit stops. Dave mentioned it. A lot of people had issues with that orange box coming onto pit road yesterday. And if you have seen the Indianapolis 500, you know that the cars go around this racetrack normally counterclockwise, but not on the road course. The road course is a clockwise uh, motion around this track, and so that's a situation that these teams and drivers will have to deal with, like you had mentioned. A few more stories before the green flag flies. Let's go back to pit road. Well, Rick, it's been no secret this year that the Toyotas have struggled on the road courses. But then yesterday, Chris Bell lit up the timesheets, being in the top five for most of practice and obviously in the qual into qualifying, qualifying fourth. And he told me, man, we've been so bad. It was gratifying to have the speed. I asked his team, where do you feel like you found a lot of that speed? And they said, in the brake zones. We saw a lot of time gained under the brakes. Chris Bell doing a great job in those brake zones. Keep an eye on that 20 car in the brake zones, Dave. Ross Chastain will be in the number one for track house racing as always today. And you'll recall that his first career win was on the very technical circuit of the Americas, Coda, where he won earlier this year. Ran this race yesterday in the Xfinity Series and ran it in a very traditional Ross Chastain style. A lot of beating and banging, let me by, I'm coming through and finished fourth. Good laps from yesterday. Ross expects to do well today, Marty. Dave, thanks to Ford Performance. We'll get to ride on board with Austin Sender today, who certainly will be a threat for the win this afternoon. He starts second. He is terrific at these road courses. One thing not in his favor, he doesn't have two pit crew members. He doesn't have his crew chief, Jeremy Bullins. They left a wheel loose at New Hampshire a couple of weeks ago. This is the second race Jeremy Bullins is sitting out. But he told me earlier this week, more importantly, it's the crew, it's the crew members that are gone. Steve, you know what that's like. You don't have your jack man. You don't have that tire changer. That's what really affects things in a track position race. Could that be a factor for Austin Zendrick on pit road today? That's a great point, Marty. Yeah, the crew chief. He could do his job, maybe even a better job away, oh, Rick. He's sitting in a nice, calm, air-conditioned location with his computer out, calling the strategy, but you need to have those pit crew members to get the tires changed. Want to take a look at the playoff standings. Again, just five races, including this one, until the playoffs begin. That means five opportunities for a driver that's not currently in the yellow to win and get in this playoff standing picture. Ryan Blaney, Mark Trex Jr. right now in on points possibility of one of these drivers that are either not yellow or below that cutoff line winning and winning their way into the playoff picture definitely looming especially over the 19 of Martin Trex Jr. All right Michael McDowell always good on the road courses let's listen into his radio. All right boys got five weeks got one goal to get a W it's the only thing that matters let's do it let's make it happen let's do it today so we don't have to worry about it for the rest of the four weeks here. I like that yeah. Just gets right to the point. Steve, how many stops is the winner going to make today? What's the, what are the, your options? Well, when you look at this race and you start to break it down, it's an 85, oh, excuse me, an 82 lap race. Uh, so it's a minimum of two pit stops. The first stage very quick, it's only 15 laps long. The second stage a little bit longer in 20 laps. Then a long final stage. So I think you got to see strategy all over the board. We'll keep you up to date on what everybody's doing, but two stops minimum for fuel. It really just depends on how important you think those Goodyear tires are. A year ago, A.J. Allmendinger stopped four times, but uh, he also wouldn't have won the race if the 11 and the 14 wouldn't have got off track. Leading the field with some unique views. That was the Coca-Cola pace car cam that we were looking at there. And now the field back into the hands of the front row and Tyler Reddick. 26 year old that is leading the field to the green flag at Indianapolis Motor Speedway, the Brickyard. 
about to get underway. Redick, Cindric, into the gas, three flags in the air. Great restart for that left lane. On your screen, Tyler Reddick, way clear. Looking through the middle. A lot of three wide, four wide, back in the back, five wide. Oh, contact, the 31's going around. Already, around goes that 31. Straightened back out again. And so, Justin Haley, not the start he was looking for, but he probably wasn't expecting five wide. Well, you, you yeah, can expect it here. It's going to happen all day long. He's starting at 17th. Out. He's got a lot of ground to make up now. A tough break, tough way to start the race. Down into seven, still some more cars trying to outbreak. Three wide here. The 22, Logano on the inside of Christopher Bell. It's a very slow, technical part of the racetrack. This is turn 11 that they're approaching. Very difficult braking zone into turn 12. We see a lot of right front tire lockup right here and some flat spots. Got to be really smart. Look at Hamlin, way, way deep early, three wide. Didn't work out. Two rookies outside of him here, Harrison Burton in that deck's 21. This leads to the front straightaway, so you got to get this thing sorted out. If you don't get a good launch off of this corner, it leads to the front straightaway, and this is a great passing opportunity. First lap complete. Tyler Reddick Send it holding to the on. Now, yeah, we've got a battle for second as Briscoe has taken that spot away from Austin Sendrick. So Sendrick trying to hang on though as he. Thunders back on the inside of that turn. Yeah, that was impressive. Made that outside work in turn two. Oh, we got another car round. Ross Chastain has spun his car round. Contact with him. Hesemann, Loris Hesemann in the 27 was also involved there. Some contact. Oh, car off track. Denny, Denny Hamlin, Hamlin way back. He's spinning out. Denny Hamlin goes around. Straightens back out, and we stay green. This was the start of the race you saw how Haley got spun around yeah just five wide getting in the corner on the race on the start of the race nowhere for everybody to go just real aggressive this is more contact that spun spins Chastain around the 17 of Busher and the 23 above Wallace getting together there and Denny gets off track here looks like he's got it under control and all of a sudden out of nowhere car just goes around wow and all that work that the drivers put in and qualified, Steve, all that work is now gone. Those guys have lost, lost track position. Now they got to go try to find it again. Yeah, now the crew chiefs are going to alternate strategies. Plan B, C, D. First of all, make sure you have no damage on your race car and then start working on how you can try to find a way to give some positions back to your driver as we see the field heading down into turn one, the hard right-hander as we get one car on pit road, the 31 of Haley. Dave. And Steve, if Denny had had anything to tell his crew chief, Chris Gabart, he would have just told him, because as you know, this place is so big, coming down the front straightaway is the clearest radio communication you can have. But he didn't tell Chris anything. When Chris and I talked just a few minutes ago, he said it's about where I put my driver when. That car just doesn't look right right now. Yeah, something's wrong with the 11. He got into Eric Almarola, and actually that helped him stay on track. I want to say the way he spun out through this Little back and forth switch back of five and six. The lap before was just so puzzling. Looked like he had the car under control, had gotten off track, and then out of nowhere, car goes around. We've seen a lot of tire lockups too. Tons of smoke in these braking areas. Can I just say that was an eventful three laps? I mean, <laughs> it ain't over. <laughs> I think it's still eventful. It shows you how important track position is. Right off the start of this race, an 82 lap race. You got to get it, you got to keep it, and just. The aggression early. Look at the seven of LaJoy sideways. This is in the back of the pack, and these guys are racing racing hard. We don't often see just how hard and intense the racing is back in the back half of the field. Maybe, maybe harder, more mistake prone than in the front of the field. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. in that 47, just behind the 11 of Denny Hamlin, putting a lot of pressure on Hamlin. And Hamlin missing every corner. He's struggling with that car. Comes Chase Briscoe, and he's getting a little bit of pressure now from 
Christopher Bell here in the Toyota as we ride along with the Toyota on board. And you saw him slide a little tire there as well. Well, like Briscoe's struggling just a little bit here. Two different entries there to turn four. One real shallow, one real wide. Still 10 back, out back to 34. No pressure. Great shot of the driver and what he has to do there as we look back on Christopher Bell. You can really use a lot of curb there, basically cutting the entire inch, uh, apex of turn 10. And it's flat over there, it's not rough. There's actually more grip if you put the right sides really on the inside of that curb of 10. Bell was pressuring Briscoe, but now about a car length separate these two cars, Marty. Rick Chase Briscoe sitting in third. His car was so good on the front end of the run yesterday. So much speed to start off with. They made changes overnight, and they kind of felt like maybe those changes might take a little bit of front end speed away, but it would really help them at the end of the run, which could be key today. Meanwhile, a little further back, Daniel Suarez sitting in the seventh position. His helmet hose as Bell tries to get that third spot, won't be able to make that move. Helmet hose for Daniel Suarez actually blowing in hot air inside the helmet. So, Jeff, how much of a distraction is that? In fact, Daniel Daniel said, if I lift my visor, it's cooler than it is with a helmet hose blowing in that hot air. That is not good on a day like today. It is very hot outside today, much hotter than it was yesterday. That's going to make this race that much more challenging. You need a little bit of cold, cool air coming into you. Denny Hamlin, of course. Dave. Look at that. Wow, Denny is just having such a struggle with that 11 car right now. When he had that chance to make clear communication this time down the front straightaway, really, really loose. That was all he said, and apparently it's really, really difficult to drive. Yeah, the 11 car, remember in practice, lots of lockups from Denny in practice the other day. Had a lot of problems trying to figure out how to get this car to slow down. Seems like they haven't really been able to improve the ability for him to perform as well in the braking zones. He missed turn one completely. He was coming out of the Actually, it's a penalty area. If you miss that turn, you have to go down that area. That's how he got back on track. Yeah, I'll be honest, I had no idea where he was at. Trying to regroup and, and regain here. Some composure, get, get in a rhythm. It's tough to do. Well, he started 15th. He's running 34th now, lap five. I mean, that's, that's a terrible start, and it's hard as a driver. I think this is where the crew chief comes in, Steve. Get him calmed down a little bit, get refocused. Yeah, this is all about composure, right? 10 laps to go in the first stage. Listen, just run 10 calm laps. Give me great feedback on the car. We're going to pit at the end of this stage, make big adjustments, and then race our own race. Uh, only more damage can be done here for the next 10 if we panic. A fascinating start to the Brickyard here for the Cup Series. Yeah, wild ride already for the 11. here in stage one from IMS. We saw some trouble going through turn one on the first lap for the number 31 of Justin Haley. One of two college racing teammates here running today. The other is the 16 of AJ Allmendinger. AJ notoriously a road course guy. He ran yesterday in his full time ride in the NASCAR Xfinity Series, earning the win. And now he's back running today, hoping to defend his race win. He took the checkers here last season in his first Cup Series victory. And he kissed the bricks two times in one weekend. Guess we'll find out as stage one carries on.
NASCAR on NBC is brought to you by Verizon. 5G from the network more people rely on. Credit One Bank, a credit card company. And by Toyota. Let's go places. And Brad Kozlowski just went off track in turn one. He was running in the 14th position. Now Kozlowski is back running 26th after getting it back on track. you got a couple cars right here yes. and one also around. Ross Chastain. Ross Chastain. Yeah, Ross Chastain tried to get down into turn one. Without breaking the 15 on the inside. Heavy, heavy contact with the left front of the one car. Joey Hand in the 15 car. Here's the replay. Look how far back he is. He knows he can't get the car slowed down, so he's trying to avoid just hitting anything. And it, But at one point, there's going to be a car coming through your path, and here's Brad Kozlowski going into turn one as well. Underneath Kyle Busch and just carrying way too much speed, trying to get the car slowed down, get the rear tires locked up, and around he went. I don't know if I'm baffled or laughing or what I'm watching here. <laughs> well, these are the best star car drivers in the world. Brad Kozlowski just missed turn one by 30 miles an hour. Yeah, I mean, is. Kyle Busch basically just checked up. He's like, yeah. go ahead, buddy. You just spin past me, and I'm going to turn in. Kyle's probably laughing. Oh, I, Kyle Busch is absolutely Till, had a giggle. To him. Yeah. That was pretty hard contact for Ross with that left front tire into the door of the 15 there in turn one. What have all these people had for breakfast, Rick? They've lost their mind. I just think that the braking performance on this car is so good that you, when you try to get a little more, you're just asking yourself, uh, you're just putting yourself in a position to make a mistake. They're all trying to out break each other as they tend to do with these road courses. And with the braking performance deep, deep, deep into the braking zone here, there's not much more you can get. We've seen a lot of mistakes early in this one. Only well, eight laps have been completed. If so we, we're on lap number nine right now with seven to go in the first stage. Yeah, if we just set a camera on turn one, we'd see somebody make a mistake through that corner every lap. Reddick's not having any problems. He's out front just rolling. Two second lead on Cindric. There you see it. I think Cindric's closing the gap just a little bit. Parker. Well, guys, as we're seeing all this action on track and cars slipping and sliding all over the racetrack, and I'm listening to some of the radios, a lot of drivers fighting drive off and braking issues. I can't help but think just feeling out here that it is hotter than yesterday in practice. We know how finicky this car can be and how uh, sensitive it is just to small changes. I just got a track temp from one of the teams down here. It's 115 degrees is what they're saying the track temp is right now. I don't know the exact difference yesterday, but my, my self barometer tells you it's definitely hotter, and I just have to think it could just be a hotter, slicker racetrack that they weren't exactly prepared for here today, Marty. Parker, I'll go one step further. Jeff, you know this. This racetrack, probably the most weather-sensitive racetrack on the entire NASCAR circuit. So when it gets hot and sunny like this, it gets really slick almost immediately. I'm going to read a few driver comments. No grip, no grip, no grip, no lateral grip. Need more rear grip. I mean, that's what all the drivers are saying. It's vastly different from yesterday in practice. Just hot and sunny and slick. Yeah, Marty, this racetrack has always been sensitive to heat, but look how flat the road course is. There's no banking anywhere. It's just perfectly flat. So no bank banking to help support the car as you transition through the corners. And that that, that always helps so much. And this, just look at it. There's absolutely no banking whatsoever, Parker. And Jeff, I just got confirmation. Today's track temp, 25 degrees hotter than yesterday during practice and qualifying. So that's a major difference for these teams, obviously, to be uh, setting these cars up for. The other issue with the track being so flat that you mentioned, Jeff, is it, it's hard to see the apex of the corner. Basically, getting down into turn one, the only thing telling you that there's a corner coming are the, are the braking signs on the right hung on the fence and this tiny little curb way off in the distance on the inside of the, of the turn. Other than that, like that banking would tend to allow you to see the racetrack and understand how close you were getting the perception of, of depth perception of the racetrack. But with this flat track, being able to see apexes is nearly impossible. Um, and that's why a lot of drivers maybe miss the braking zones. They're going to get better as the day goes, but a lot of mistakes early on. This group coming up on 12. You see the damage on the one car, the body beating up a little bit, pushed in. The splitter, he's going to pit road. And clears that orange square that everyone was worried about yesterday. So Ross Chastain comes to pit road early here on lap 11. Dave. 
Rick, he's not been doing a lot of complaining about that race car. So is this a strategy move? If you take the 72 laps remaining, 36 apiece, one more stop or probably a couple of stops based on tire wear? We shall see, but need to get a look at this car just to make sure nothing is rubbing on it. He'll take on four fresh Goodyear tires to get a full fill of Sunoco fuel and give Phil Surge and his crew chief some options from here on out. Yeah, they're going to take a good long look at that left front. You see, they, I think they tried to put the tire on. They decided to take it back off. You know, make sure your damage is fixed. You shouldn't lose a lap here. We see on the top right, you see the track map. The leader, the eight of Reddick, is coming into turn 13 now. Calling for the saw. They mean it. Nope, they're going to leave it. Well, I think the one's going to lose a lap at this point because he's still on pit road, and here comes Reddick off the final corner. But, you know, you know a stage end is coming. The only concern for... Uh, the one at Chastain is that Justin Haley is also one lap down, so it won't be an automatic free pass as we see the leader, right-hand side of your screen heading into turn one. Left-hand side of your screen was the one of Chastain losing a lap. Four still to go in stage one, and out front, Tyler Reddick has over a two-second lead over Austin Sendrick. The young guys are showing the veterans how to make their way around this road course at Indianapolis. Five races left here in the regular season and Martin Truex Jr. He's still looking for his first win of the season, but he is the first driver above the cut line. We've seen enough drivers this season get their first win that Martin Truex Jr. has that potential of not making the playoff. But when it comes to road course experience, he does have four wins on road courses throughout his career. He finished 14th here last season and is currently running 19th. So keep an eye on that 19 car looking for win number one of the season to solidify by his spot in the play. Seventeen of Chris Busher has just come to pit road, and while he was on pit road, the car caught on fire. You see all the smoke and dust from the fire extinguishers used to put the fire out, but now I'm not sure Chris Busher can see. I'm not sure how he's either breathing in You're this doing thing. There, man. I can't see. And as we say that, here comes Reddick before the end of the stage, kind of as predicted, the leader's going to pit. Strategy, Marty, to try to keep track position. Yeah, they're going to give up stage points here, Steve, and what would have been a playoff point for Tyler Reddick, who right now is in the playoffs. So an interesting move. And you also see left-hand side of your screen, Chase Frisco staying out. They're now going to run and get those points. And if they can get that playoff point, win the stage, because they need every point they can get with that 14 car. No surprise, Tyler Reddick, very happy with the race car. No complaints, Parker. Right, Chris Rebell picks out a fourth position here, just loose in the left-handers, but very happy in that race car in the right-handers here, just air pressure for the rim. And you see Austin Sindrick on pit road here. He's coming in, ran second that entire stage. No complaints from Sindrick either, getting his four fresh Goodyear tires. So a handful staying out there, Steve, to gather those stage points, which they'll need maybe later to make it into the playoffs. Yeah, it's all priority. If you want a chance to win the race, the goal is to pit here before the end of the stage. Uh, Chase Briscoe, though, staying on the racetrack is by design. You know, he has won 
this year. He feels he's going to make the playoffs, so he wants that all-important playoff point. And if he can stay out front with two laps to go, he should have really no problem picking it up. And he just ran over something there in turn nine and ten. There's a little piece of debris on the race. I think it's one of those little uh, mud flaps that come off the back of the car. Um, I don't know if that should bother him. but Yeah, a little piece of plastic. I don't think that would cut a tire. Yeah. We're riding along with highpoint.com cam there for Chase Briscoe. Again, Briscoe staying out. Now, Steve, with one lap to go in this stage, does he come at the end of the stage break to pit road, or would he stay out and maybe wait until you go back green in stage two to come to pit road? That's a real interesting discussion, Rick, because I think at this point, winning the stage is crystal clear, and then I can make an argument staying on the racetrack, um, keep that track position. The real question is, how bad is this car handling? You'd have to run about a 15 more laps on these old tires, so we're going to have to see. But the first trick is to run all 14 corners without an issue. It hasn't been an issue for Briscoe, but it's been an issue for enough other drivers that nothing is guaranteed today. Right out in front of Briscoe, I believe, is the Heston's car, number 27. And that's important. That's an important piece of information because if he laps him for whatever reason, I don't think he'll get there. But Ross Chastain's sitting in position to be able to get the the free pass. And so that's that's something to watch as we finish this lap here. I don't think Chase will catch the 27, but. Ross is counting on getting that free pass to get back on the lead lap after a very long stop to work on the one after there was damage done in turn one. A little technical spot of the track here is Chase Briscoe winding down this last lap of stage one. Briscoe laps, Rick. You got it all figured out. We got half the field <laughs> fitted. Half the field hasn't. I think half the field is spun out. That's why I sit next to you, Steve, to make <laughs> sure that you'll tell me all the strategies that are going to work. Well, that's the stage one win, and it goes to Chase Briscoe, his third career stage win. All of them have come this year. Ryan Blaney, another driver looking for points, currently in that 15th position in the playoffs. William Byron, Joey Gano, Chase Elliott. Rounding out the top five with Gilliland, Larson, Kyle Busch, Harrison Burton, and Martin Shrex Jr. All rounding out the top ten. Chase Elliott, eventful turn one for him. Like everybody else, it seems like. Turn one has been very difficult. Elliott goes around. Briscoe, the Indiana native, wins stage one. number 14 of Chase Briscoe is the stage one winner. When you look at history though on road courses and stage wins, not a great place to be in if you're Chase Briscoe. Of course, despite getting those stage points, all six stage winners on road courses this season have finished outside of the top 10. And in the last seven road courses, we have yet to see a stage winner go on to win the race. Now, of course, there are plenty of perks of winning a stage. You get the bonus points, you get the stage points. But that number 14 of Chase Briscoe has a little bit of ground to make up if history were to repeat itself here today from IMS. Plenty of racing to go here as we still have two more stages at Indianapolis Motor Speedway.
NASCAR on NBC is brought to you by Ford. Built Ford proud. Verizon, 5G from the network more people rely on. And download America's loved free-to-play slots app. Visit goldfish-racing.com. You're watching the Verizon 200 at the Brickyard, along with all the folks here on the grass, enjoying this one as well. And once again, with Rut City View, we get to take a peek at different areas around the racetrack. Let's go to one of my favorite places to see Rut. He's at a brewery. That's right. You know, I asked our friend James Hinchcliffe, what's a spot that I can't miss? And he told me when there's 40 daredevils on the track, you head to Daredevil Brewing. Take a look at this amazing place. It was started in 2012, moved here in 2015 to a 10,000 square foot facility. This is an award winning brewery. Great place to watch a race. Try James's favorite, the Liftoff Brewery. Uh, and you can tell, guys, with the Daredevil up there in the sky at 9% alcohol by volume, you'd be flying high too. What a great spot here in Speedway, Indiana, guys. What I love about coming to this racetrack, it's in Speedway, Indiana, which is really surrounded by Indianapolis. <laughs> yeah, I just wanted to let Rutt know we're on floor nine of the Pagoda, Rutt. <laughs> Or nine, you Delivery. Does us. he deliver? So you're asking earlier about what these guys were going to do. Briscoe, who won stage one. Blaney, second. Byron, Logano, Elliott. You know, I really believe at this point you're going to continue to stay on the racetrack, run farther enough in this next stage to only have to pit one time. Um, that's a great idea for track position. The risk, if you do that, is you are going to restart on the oldest tires. So we're really, this is going to be the choice for the driver and the crew chief. We're going to see very quickly here what everyone thinks about fresh Goodyear tires. Would they rather have track position or tires? That will be the decision as these teams come around, turn 12 and 13 and have to decide to pit. Race leader Chase Briscoe will be first to make the decision and he is coming to pit road. There you go. So they believe that fresh tires are more important than track position. They just thought that that stage one points that they filled their bucket up with was a priority. Starting to kind of get a little glimpse on the decisions of some of these crew chiefs and engineers on pit road. Guys, Chase Elliott to his crew about that spin over the curb. He said, did I damage the car? I probably did. And then he was told, no, you probably did not. So the nine car should be good there. He did want a little bit better uh, handling on that. They're gonna make a little bit of an adjustment, not necessarily for the exit of the turns, but for great for braking. Needs more rear grip in the nine car, Marty. Dave, to Steve's point, uh, crew chiefs, this is what they think about fresh tires. This is also what they think about the handling of the race car, right? So Joey Logano, not very happy with his, says they absolutely no rear grip, and also said it feels like I don't have as good a rear brakes as I should have in that 22 car. He finished third in that first stage, actually finished second in that first stage, so nice run for him. Him. And then the 14 car, Chase Briscoe, that playoff point in the bank for Chase Briscoe. Said so they needed more lateral grip for that. They got the playoff point, but now they give up all that track position. It's going to be interesting to see how they can come back up through the field. Was able to hang on as far as coming onto pit road first, getting off pit road first. Logano onto pit road second and off pit road second, so losing no spots. Stage one is done. Stage two about to be get underway. Indianapolis Motor Speedway. That number 12 of Ryan Blaney currently running third. Ryan was the runner up here in this race last year, and he does have one career win on a road course. Now, he finished 33rd last week at Pocono, which is not what he wanted to see, considering he is still looking for his first win this season. But that being said, he's led in more races than any other driver. 16 races this season. The field, but again, still looking for that first win of the year. Ryan is either hoping to get that win or potentially earn the regular season championship to sit himself into the playoffs. But as of right now, that 12 is not officially locked into the postseason.
<laughs> NASCAR Drive is your live race day companion. You can select from alternate camera angles and customize your viewing experience with multiple camera views. Visit NASCAR.com slash drive, or you can download the NASCAR mobile app today. Looking down on this beautiful facility in Indianapolis, aerial coverage brought to you by Geico. Yes, that's a golf course. A few holes are on the inside of the racetrack. And a little bit further away from that golf course is Pitt Road and Dave Burns is there. And Chris Busher is here, Rick, and he has a dirty job. His job is to drive this race car no matter what. When he came down to Pitt Road, uh, it was on fire. They put the fire out. When he went back out, he agreed that the fire was no longer there. And so when he had this opportunity to pit, well, what they do? Well, they blew out the whole interior of the car because there was a lot of smoke damage in there. Where's Chris? Still in the driver's seat. What a guy. He sat there. Now, he does have a, a hose to his top, uh, to his helmet, so hopefully he's getting some fresh air there. But as he's sitting there, they're trying to blow all this out so Chris can not only see, but he has some of that smoke out of there. Coming back to pit road now. Now, Steve, help me with this. On the accident that he had with the 23 on track, Bubba Wallace's car got into the door of the 17, pushed some things around. What's the hottest part of the car underneath? Yeah, the exhaust. That's right. And so push part of that. You can see the damage there toward the door foam, which can catch fire. And according to the team, this may be how it all got started. I would be shocked because I've always been informed that the door foam cannot catch fire, that it was fire safe. That's why it was inside these race cars. So if that did catch fire, I think NASCAR is really going to ask themselves how it happened. Uh, we're going to have to follow up and the Paul Harvey's going to have to come out on this one. Well, We're going to get the whole rest of the story later. And as you know, they will all go to that and make sure that it wasn't the foam, but it was something that maybe surprised them. But again, things got pushed around in positions they shouldn't be in the race car. Yeah, I was shocked to see when I saw the fire. I thought it would have been a fuel issue on the left hand side, though. Look at the leaders. We have four cars that have yet to come to pit road and then all those guys 12 and 13. That whole group headed before the green. If we can rotate to the next page, you're going to see Chase Briscoe, the winner of stage one he's right here in 21st so the first car that pitted after the yellow will start outside the top 20 the entire field has been flipped upside down and for the front four cars old tires versus track position i don't feel great about it rick after seeing the start of the race we'll see if it works out for blaney byron lajoy and brad k we already know how difficult that turn one is as the field approaching the geico restart zone and stage two is underway. Four, five wide again, six wide back there further. No one's made you three wide yet, your corner. <laughs> this is crazy. I can't believe it. Oh, no. And around goes the off four. the front Harvick. of the Ty Gibbs. It's Harvick. We're going here. Car through the grass. Looked like maybe the nine of Chase Elliott. Harvick gets straightened back out again. And now the field strings out as they head to seven. Harvick's got his car rolling. So many people change positions right there with cars. And Hamlin stopped in the middle of the racetrack. Harvick stopped. Oh, more contact right there. The 34-42. The 20 is the beat of the sandwich. Oh, man, they fight around the outside of these corners. You wouldn't see the old car do that. So It'll battle on the outside of these switchbacks. And, and Junior Jeff, I'm asking the question now, are these guys getting more comfortable with the carbon fiber bodies or these, these composite bodies where they feel like they can just lay on another car? It's just an opportunity on these restarts. You know how difficult it is to pass. Competition is so tough. They're right there in front of you. That's the opportunity to go get spots. And, Everybody is willing to put themselves in a difficult position and put others in a difficult position. I'd say yes, Rick, but I'd replace carbon fiber bodies with toe link. Because the toe <laughs> links, you, the toe links were breaking on this thing. Yeah. Left and right at the start of the season. Now they're beefy enough. Look at this here. Oh man. Four wide for Harvick. Austin Dillon's like checking him, trying not to touch him, but they just funnel down into a space where they can't fit. Look at all, bam, 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 watch this. Austin checks up, but it's just too late. What's another throttle? Oh, Denny, big Denny contact. Oh, man. Alex Bowman, big damage on the front of the 48. He's on pit road. 
Yeah, that flat left front, he's driven it around, running on that flat tire. We're getting ready to see what exactly can get drug off a car because this he's run almost a whole lap, Dave, on a flat tire. Grinding the left front of that car down. Here comes Alex Bowman. A run yesterday in the Xfinity Series to get experience here and told me today that he thought that he would have a decent shot at a road course, uh, you know, good finish for him at a time when they really need that. Of course, in on one win this year, so into the playoffs, but four tires here to get him back on and repair the damage. It's going to be a laundry list of incidents over the course of the race. We are only, what, 20 laps into the whole race. Let's so take what? a look right here. The left front of the 48 just goes down. He was in that big stack up early. I think it was already low on air, and now this is going down to turn seven with a flat tire. That was a good job where he, he didn't decide to go through seven. He actually turned on the access road on the inside of seven, avoiding contact with anybody there. Yeah, and he leaves pit lane. He's going to be just out in front of the leaders. So if he can stay in front of the leaders, that will salvage his opportunity. But we're getting ready to find out. Marty, how about Ryan Blaney in that 12. Yeah, let's talk about Ryan Blaney not pitting. Jonathan Hassler making that call. That was one of the plays he could have made today. So, Steve, you got to remember, they're one of two teams in the playoffs right now simply on points without a win so far this year. So, Hassler making this move to get those points, number one. And then also, you can connect it from the start of the race to three to go in the States. There's already 14 to go here in stage two. So, all he's got to do is run another 12 laps here, and Blaney can cut out a stop in this race. So, you agree with this move from Jonathan Hassler to keep Blaney out and only try and get two stops here today? I instantly had strategy remorse when they were four wide down to turn one in row five. I was concerned about these old tires because drivers have talked about how much they've been slipping and sliding. Uh, you know, in the seven of LaJoy, he's falling back to 11th now, so he's losing a few spots. The six of Keselowski in fifth also stayed on the racetrack doing a fine job. But for the 12 of Blaney and the 24 of Byron, first and second currently, this is going to work out really, really well. Even if Byron loses two or three spots, first of all, no damage. I mean, if you go back there in the, what did the spotter say? You're not three wide yet. So he yeah. just knows you're going to be three wide on his restarts. So these guys not only should find some track position, but more importantly, have a relaxing stint. Like every every single fuel run can't be a fight. And uh, it's a lot easier in first and second. How about in this battle, you can see that Cindric, these are the first two guys on, new, on tires. They, these are the first guy on four tires. When all this started, that eight car, remember, he led the early part of the race. Cindric has got in front of him. So in their mind, this is the race for the lead. And there will be a fierce battle right here between Reddick and Cedric. Right now, Cedric is leading that battle between the two. Let's go to the guys on pit road with DJ and Hinch. Hinch, I'll tell you what, I have to say that that might have been the craziest first 15 laps of a race that I've ever seen anywhere. You kind of set it up in the pre-race show. And it proved to be that for these guys. It really is, man. No matter what kind of race car you're driving here, stock cars, indie cars, sports cars, this is a break energy, high energy racetrack. It's really hard on the brakes, so you got to be easy on the brakes. We've seen all sorts of problems down into turn one with the six, the nine. We saw it with Bubba Wallace at the start there. It is so easy to not only overdo it, to lock up a tire and flat spot it. And you've got to take care of these tires. We talked about it. This track's hard on them anyway, and locking them up under braking is just making it that much harder. But I'll tell you, he's doing a great job taking care of his tires is Ryan Blaney. Yeah, he really is. And uh, Rick, we'll send it back to you, but this is entirely entertaining of action that we've seen here. I think I have the I have the luxury of being able to watch Steve and Steve keeps scratching his head and going what is going on on the racetrack right now with some of these guys as Blaney is smoking the tires there and William Byron will challenge him. You're watching the Verizon 200 at the Brickyard.
download America's love free to play slot set. Visit goldfish racing.com. The five of Kyle Larson on pit road. They're doing some extensive work to the right front of that, Parker. Right, Rick. He had contact with what we believe to be the 10 of Eric Almarola there at some point. Had to drag this car around the racetrack all through turns 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12 back there, but the right front was completely disconnected. You see here the replay down into turn one. Oh, there's Eric Almarola getting to the right side of Kyle Larson. That obviously hurt the right front suspension. The team's trying to fix it right now. Yeah, a lot of damage there to the 10. We see the right front of the 5. It's locked up. Wheel turned the wrong way. And still Blaney's out front by six tenths of a second over William Byron. Tyler Reddick has moved up to the third spot. Austin Cindric fourth. A.J. Allmendinger is fifth. Remember, different strategies for the top five right now. Ryan Blaney, William Byron have not been to pit road yet. Reddick and Cindric and Allmendinger all came on lap 13. Allmendinger was 12. Kozlowski on a different strategy. He hasn't come to pit road yet. He's running in the sixth position. Steve, we saw this in practice. The tires actually getting a little bit quicker as those guys went out and ran. So the longevity or the tire life uh, and the lack of fall off definitely has changed some of these guys' strategy. Don't you think going in this race, kind of had they were up in there as far as tire fall off and how that might affect them and the decision they make to come to pit road? Absolutely. The question is, you know, could you get enough fuel? mileage to do it in only two pit stops if not that means you have to work in three pit stops which then means you have extra laps kind of to play with so where do you want the freshest tires and right now it would seem that clean air and track position is way more valuable than fresh tires as uh you know we, we documented blaney and byron but even brad kozlowski you know we saw him go through the grass once today and here he is riding around in the sixth position comfortably parker well, guys, we get a look here at Kevin Harvick, who was spun after that last restart. We've seen those big rushes down to turn one, and as we see, AJ Omnier now off the racetrack. Somewhere around here, I can't even exactly tell exactly. Oh, we got more spun out. Harrison down Burton turn one. is around. Almendinger, who was running in the fifth position, was off track. Wow. 41, Cole Custer off track. And Almendinger got out of the sand. What a nice job. I didn't know with the low. A you know, low profile tire, if that thing was going to bury in the sand or not. We saw that, that in the, we went off in the Indy car race. The Indy car guys getting through. They really have the sand here manicured really nicely to be able to allow those guys opportunity to get through there if they have to bail into the sand. We're talking about drivers and how upset they get and the notes they keep on the other drivers as the race progresses. Well, my notebook's full right now because I'm mad <laughs> at a ton of people at the moment. I've been pushed around, shoved around. Let's see what happened to AJ Allmendinger right here. Just pushing hard trying to make something happen drives off track keeps it going that's turn three and then the turn four he just kind of puts the right rear or the right sides into the grass and just and then right here harrison burton trying to outbreak and get underneath the 41 of custer and harrison actually backed into custer wonder how much damage is right there rear tires locked up trying to outbreak Turn one has been the trouble spot all day, guys. What I don't understand, we didn't have a dramatic amount of practice, but we had, you know, a couple 20-minute sessions plus some qualifying sessions, and we didn't see any of this lack of car control. We saw some rear grip issues on some of the long lateral corners, uh, like 14 and perhaps 11, but we didn't see any of this just loss of control under braking. Yet today, in, all I can assume is the track temperature that Parker talked about earlier has really taken away the braking capability of these race cars. Practice doesn't pay. Yeah. You know, and, and once you get out there, you start racing, and you know that opportunity to pass is under braking, then that's what you're going to do. You're going to try to overtake under braking. Hitch and I talked about it before the race, how important it is to get good launches off of these corners and then drive, be able to drive deep into the corner to take a spot. Parker, continue on with four. Oh, yeah, back to Kevin Harvick here. Just take a listen to his radio after getting spun on that last restart, Jeff. I think this goes to your point of being angry. Tell me who pulled those. Uh, 48 started it, but I could tell you who finished you off. And that's the crazy part, right? When you have all this melee happening in those restarts of four or five wide, you want to be angry at someone, but the team couldn't even tell him who to be angry at because, I mean, he was being hit by three or four cars there. How do you even choose who to be angry at, Marty? 
Meanwhile, Parker, on pit road, there's a massive chess match going on. Ryan Blaney trying to hang on to his car for about three or four more laps, and they'll come to pit road. So, Steve, what happens when the tires don't fall off as much as you thought? You burn more fuel, right? So right now, just talk to Randall Burnett, the crew chief for Tyler Reddick, who led the first 12 laps of the race. He thinks they cannot do the race on two stops, while Blaney, Byron, they could do it on two stops. They'll short pit stage two here, but an interesting dynamic playing out. Coming into the day, everyone thought they could do it on two stops. Now, maybe not. Well, it really just determines on, you know, how much fuel you can save while you're running under a green flag, how much fuel you put in on that first pit stop. The tire changes are so fast anymore, Rick, that you can actually change tires faster than fill the car up. So if you get in too big of a hurry on pit road, you can actually leave without the tank being full. So it's just we're just going to have to kind of wait and see how it all shakes out. Right now, if I could be anybody, I would just go ahead and be the race leader. I don't hate where he is. He's doing a fine job. And, and I guess I want to question what Marty had just said there. Blaney and Byron have already gone 28 laps. They haven't come to pit road. So they can come to pit road now, and then they only have 54 laps to go. So you break that in half, and that's your two stops. Yeah, so I think these guys right here are going to run. Uh, I would run it out even further. I think everybody can go about 33 laps. So, you know, I would imagine these guys are going to run probably two or three more, pit with three to go in this stage, and then have one more stop in the, in the final stage. The problem is the guys that pitted at 13, right. if they thought that was their first of two, what Marty is saying is that first stop was too early. This 12 car man is pushing it down in turn one, Jeff. There's a lot of moments down there. It looks like he's right on that edge of control. Every time under braking, the back of the car is just dancing all around. We heard Joey Logano, his teammate, talking about having rear brake troubles. We just saw a, a team car there. There's Harrison Burton locked the rear tires up on corner entry into one. Now we're seeing it with Blaney as well. And William Byron sees it too. So William Byron's job right now is to put tons of pressure on him, make that 12 of Blaney drive a harder into turn one and try to get those rear tires slide, sliding, get him loose and take the spot. Six laps, under six laps to go in stage two. And again, Blaney and Byron pulled away from Reddick and Reddick has the fresher tires. He's 1.5 seconds back from Tyler Reddick. There's Blaney and Byron. You see him coming into the picture, but these older tires have held up very well. Yeah, this tire is too good. Very, very little fall off to see the 24 car coming to pit road. I like that radio communication, all four on the asphalt. A good reference to miss that orange box to not occur a penalty. So now we see William Byron will take the right hand turn down on pit road, Parker. Right, he was called to, to the pit road here using the code word Chevrolet on this 24 car. All the plan here is to, the first to blink on this strategy between him and Blaney getting the lead by staying out there through stage one. We expect this to be for Goodyear tires and filling it full of Sunoco fuel here on the 24. William Byron hitting out the second place right now. This looks to be a routine stop. We'll be back for more in Indianapolis right after this. drivers and teams are busy out there on the racetrack. I am a bit quieter here because I'm in the media center. Now, we're here at Indianapolis Motor Speedway. This is one of the most prestigious stages in all of motorsports, which means for as many exciting finishes and moments that we've seen on the racetrack, it was in this room right here that the media was working tirelessly for hours covering the sport. This is just a small part of the behind the scenes and really a small part of the entire 
team that it takes to put any race weekend together. Now, this is one room in the media center. There's plenty more for photogs and other videographers, but here you see this is the press. They're typing away, they're working away, and they're bringing you all of the latest updates from here at Indy. So enjoy a little behind the scenes look here as we only have four laps left before we end stage two. to download the official app of NASCAR and follow the action with free live scoring or in car cameras and radio broadcast search NASCAR in your app store and you can download and start a free trial. Blaney still leading. We see Michael McDowell on pit road. Parker. Right, just pulling away four tires. This was routine stop here as these strategies start to play out as we get towards the end of stage two. Michael McDowell won the first on pit road, Dave. And with no wins in 2022, Martin Truex Jr. comes into this one as the man on the bubble. Car pretty good for him now. James Small told me this morning he improved every lap in practice. They ran only 11, and he got better every time, Marty. You see Joey Logano coming down pit road. They're going to run this stage short as well as teammate Ryan Blaney still has not pitted today. You know, there's an old adage in racing, be the last to pit first and the first to pit last. Ryan Blaney winning that battle today. They're going to come down pit road this time. For the first time today, you're going to see Ryan Blaney come on to pit road here. His only complaint about the car is that it just has no, no drive off. You also see Tyler Reddick matching him here. So that point being made that Randall Burnett made to me a moment ago, I don't think we can make it in two stops so Tyler Reddick matching the move here with Ryan Blaney coming to pit road right behind him Reddick has had no complaints about his race car Blaney saying need a little bit better drive off but what's amazing to me and Steve everyone on pit road noticed it those tires those Goodyear tires held on so well for Ryan Blaney I think everyone's knowing hey you can stay on those tires forever if you want yeah so it's gonna be very interesting as we see Blaney and Reddick make their pit stop Christopher Bell stays on the racetrack so you know, you, you you go on vacation of a race, Rick, and you think you know what plane you're getting on, the option one, two, or three when it comes to pit strategy. And we've had two jump strategies a couple times. We're just going to have to wait to see where it plays out when we see where the cautions are. You see how much longer the 12 pit stop takes if they have to wait on that fuel. That's what we talk about. It doesn't dump as quickly, and therefore the H can easily uh, beat him off pit road, and he does just because he doesn't need fuel or as much fuel. So the three cars coming off of pit road, they'll blend back in. Again, now race leader Christopher Bell. When he crossed the start finish line with two laps to go, that closed pit road, so no one else will be able to make their way onto pit road now without any kind of a penalty. But Christopher Bell is going to try to make it all the way back to the finish line after another lap as we listen into his radio. Let's start working on saving a little bit of fuel here. We're going to stay at the stage. There's no lap time fall off here, so we'll save hard when the caution comes out. All right, so there's your translation. That's Adam Stevens communicating to his driver very clearly what his strategy is. Hey, save a little gas. You have a seven-second lead. We're going to stay at the stage. We're not going to pit is what that means. 34 of 82 laps have been run, uh, 49 laps to go. So what I need you to do is save me a little bit of gas. So I cannot pit at the end of the stage and we'll then run 10 or 12 laps into the final stage and pit for our final time, Jeff. So, you know, kind of what Marty was talking about, the tires and how well they're gripping up. The crew chiefs are going to have to continue to adjust. That's what makes these so difficult. You know, we talk about strategy like it's black and white and you can know what it's like at 10 a.m. on a Sunday morning, but none of us predicted this chaotic start. Cars backwards everywhere. Cars locking up tires everywhere. And while we didn't think there would be a lot of tire fall off, I'm shocked even 
with that situation, how well Blaney was able to lead. I mean, there's a difference between no fall off, uh, you know, as far as grip and, and, and being able to leave off the front of the field. So now he can save fuel. That's Christopher Bell. He was on pit road on lap 13. And we have completed 34 laps of this 82 lap race. You listen to him, he's very gingerly applying the throttle. You know, a six second lead back to Kyle Busch. So this will be one of the slowest laps. The last lap he ran was three seconds slower than what he had been running. He probably did the same thing again here. You know, to move the car forward, you burn gas. So the easier you go, the more fuel you save. Through turn 13, and now the big sweeping turn 14, the right-hander to get him back out on the front stretch. And it will be the first career stage win for Christopher Bell. And it happens at Indianapolis Motor Speedway, the Brickyard. It's a shocking stat. Kyle Busch. On a similar strategy, he came on lap 17. Bubba Wallace was on pit road at lap 12. Chase Elliott, lap 17 also. Denny Hamlin, who we've seen struggle almost all of this race, finishes sixth in stage two. Also on the pit on lap 12 strategy. Briscoe, Custer, Jones, and Ware round out the top 10. So guys off track, six wide going into turn number one. Christopher Bell gets stage one, or stage two win. Two stages complete now here from Indianapolis Motor Speedway. That number 20 of Christopher Bell is the stage two winner. Bell, one of 14 drivers locked into the playoffs, currently on a win. He got his first win of the season two weeks ago at New Hampshire, but that was his first career stage win in the NASCAR Cup Series. Now, mind you, I did mention after stage one that we have yet to see a stage winner in the last seven road course races go on to win the race, much less in the last three road course races this season. None of the stage winners have finished in the top 10. Now with five races left in the regular season, this is prime time for these drivers to be picking up these stage points and earning those playoff points. Again, Chris Bell already locked into the playoffs. Another win today would nothing but solidify that spot if we were to get more than 16 winners this season. We're mapping the schedule presented by Advanced Auto Parts. Next week, we're in Michigan. And if you are traveling fans and you run into car issues, AAP is there for all your car needs. Every one of these drivers wants to end up in victory lane. And right now, two of the best are there now with DJ and Hinch. Yeah, thanks, Rick. Uh, we just thought that we would show you what these drivers are racing for right now. It's about this trophy here. One more stage left, a lot going on, kind of interesting strategies, but I don't think it matters if you're driving a stock car, any car, saving tires and fuel is kind of the same thing, right, Hinch? It's the same thing. It takes the same skills, and actually, they kind of help each other to save fuel in these cars. What you're doing is at the end of the straightaway, you're lifting off the throttle, long coast phase. That way, you're using the brakes a little less, maybe a little less likely to have some of those lockups that we saw. So ultimately, when you're doing that and you're saving fuel, you're saving brakes, you're saving tires all at the same time, 
same time. And we said it at the last the last time we spoke. Ryan Blaney was doing a phenomenal job. He continued all the way to the end of that stint he wanted to do. So far, he's doing a great job at a track that's normally punishing on tires. Yeah, and we know that now things are really going to ramp up. And I'm sure this restart, guys, can't be crazy or anything like that. They go down into turn one, right? If you could be eight wide, they might do it on this restart. We have seen six wide. It's been pretty incredible. And Hinch, how have you enjoyed this crossover weekend? Oh, guys, it's been awesome. I mean, to have Indy cars racing here yesterday, and then obviously the Xfinity race now being here with Cup. I think anytime you get race fans here at the Speedway for not one, not two, but three great races, it's huge. It's been a lot of fun being here, watching and learning a little bit. Hope all the NASCAR fans are watching the Indy car race as well and got to enjoy that. And man, I can't wait for next year. <laughs> well, we've enjoyed the mayor of Hinchtown able to join us for this Cup Series race. He was a part of the Xfinity Series broadcast yesterday as well. Uh, Great insight coming from a driver who has spent so much of his life racing on this racetrack. See the 18, the 9, and the 5 all making their way onto pit road. Dave. Here comes Chase Elliott to the surprise of his crew chief, Alan Gustafson. They were discussing whether or not to pit, and Chase wanted to know, should I? And nope, stay out, stay out. And suddenly the 9 was here. So you have to adjust to that, and the crew will now go to work, give him the Goodyear tires and the Snoco fuel he needs. He needs a bit of an adjustment, too, because the car is not exactly to his liking. And one thing they can't change, and he's tried to, is the balance of the brakes. We'll talk more about that a little bit later. Marty? 12 stage points in the book for Kyle Busch today, and he finishes second in that stage. A number of cars obviously staying out right here. Kyle saying the car just a little bit too free. And Ben Bayshore telling him, hey, I think tires might actually start mattering the longer this race goes. A little bit longer there on the left front. That's going to cost him a little bit of time, but with less cars on pit road, shouldn't cost him too much. But Kyle said the car, not bad. He also asked for an ice bag. Very warm here at Indianapolis this afternoon. So just a few takers on pit road this time, and we will update the starting order when we return. A few pit stops have happened and we're getting ready here to start stage three. Interestingly enough though, when you look at the top five finishers there in stage two, there were two drivers that do not have solidified drops for next season. No rides in place for that number 42 of Ty Dillon and the other, the 18 of Kyle Busch. That's right, contract years for both of those drivers and that 18, the three time champion has yet to announce where he'll be next season. So Kyle Busch looking for a strong run here today, and of course a strong run for the remainder of the season as he awaits his fate here for 2023.
get ready for an all-access pass to the world of NASCAR like you've never seen it before. The drama, the pressure, and the danger, all to become a champion. Don't miss the new NASCAR docuseries, Race for the Championship, it premieres September 1st on USA. NASCAR Cup Series from Indianapolis. It's the Verizon 200 at the Brickyard, about ready to get underway with the third and final stage from the road course here. Dave. Talked as Chase Elliott was coming to pit road, how there was a little bit of confusion. Steve, I want you to put yourself back in the chair as you listen to this conversation between driver and crew chief. If y'all said something, I sure didn't hear it until I was already there, so. Yeah, that's my fault. I was working on it, trying to figure it out. This was a little bit too late. Last voice was Alan Gustafson, Steve. He was working on the strategy when Chase Spider was coming to pit road and then you had to adjust. Yeah, you know, one thing I've noticed, Dave, is, you know, as I sit up here in my transition to television above the track, not worrying about one specific car, not worrying about communicating with my driver, it's so much easier to put pen to paper and, and decide what you think is right for each driver because you don't have any other emotion in it or any other distraction in it. As a crew chief, you are doing so many things. Should you pit, should you not? What's your fuel mileage? What's your air pressure? If we do pit, what's our adjustment? What's our competitors doing? That it's very easy to just simply lose track of where you are in the pace lap, Rick. And you heard it right there. I mean, no one was upset, but yeah, man, sorry. I was working on it and I didn't get you the information. Chase pitted. Those things happen, even at a big track like, like Indianapolis Road Course. Uh, it's easy to kind of get lost in the task at hand and forget who else you have to tell. Parker. And think about Adam Stevens on the 20 car, the crew chief here. He went into this race telling me, I believe this could be a three-stop race. That's how they designed their strategy, but they had the two-stopper sort of in their back pocket if they saw the tire fall off. Wasn't that bad? Well, it wasn't. He's gotten the lead, and he said the strategy is simple now for Chris Bell. Get a good restart and build the biggest lead he possibly can so when they have to take a little bit more fuel than some of those other cars that have pitted later in this race, hopefully they've built enough gap to cycle out right in front of them. So the, uh, the strategy is simple here for Chris Bell. Go fast. Yeah, let's let's just make the strategy kind of at home. What does everyone need? Because that's really what matters. It doesn't matter how they got here. Christopher Bell, Wallace, Dylan, Hamlin, all those guys, they're probably a little short on fuel, so they need to save a little gas, but they only want to stop one time. The challenge is they need to put a lot of gas in. They're going to have like a 13-second pit stop. You look at the guys at 17, kind of the same issue. Reddick, Byron, those guys, Rick, not only are they pretty confident they can make it on gas, they're going to come down pit road. They're going to have a shorter pit stop. They don't have to wait on fuel. When the tires are done, the car will leave. So now if you're Reddick, you got to stay as close to Bell and as close to Wallace as you can. So they can't save fuel, and you can beat them if they have a slow pit stop. Pressure him as much as you can. And the fuel approaching the Geico restart zone again. Hang on, folks. How many wide will we be this time? See Todd Dillon in that. Red car on the inside lane did not get a good launch. Frisco puts himself in the middle there, Jeff. A little bit of a risk. And underneath there, here comes Tyler Reddick. They're going to make contact. Line clear. Everybody got a little piece of contact through that corner. Frisco's. Briscoe's clear, sorry Rick, Briscoe's clear as you see through five and six. Side by side, look at the run that gets the yellow car, Blaney, that 12 car, they were side by side through there. He was able to build a lot of momentum, now gonna try to get two spots. Also keep your eye on the 34 of Michael McDowell. He is making up a lot of ground here. He goes oh. through the turn right there and trying to get by Ross Chastain now. Chastain's trying on the inside of that 24, had to give that up. Now he's got McDowell on the inside of 10. And now side by side. It's going to be really tough right here to maintain your composure. Turning the car, a lot of right front lock up here. Everybody pretty clean so far. Which that might be the first time you've said that all race. Oh, the restart just oh. started. Suarez hard into the back of the 34 McDowell's. They come around turn 14. Suarez in the 99 on the outside of the two car now is Cindric. Back out onto the front stretch they go. It's still Bell out front. He has put that distance between himself and Bubba Wallace. Driving the orange number 23. Chase Briscoe running third. Hamlin fourth. Tyler Reddick is fifth. Blaney on the inside, the yellow car of the 41 of Cole Custer. Takes that position away. 
Byron trying to follow him through. Byron jumps to the outside of the 12 now. Byron, the white car here in the second of the screen. They all try to close in on the 43 of Eric Jones, who just signed him a new contract with GMS Petty Motorsports. Eric Jones, we've seen a lot of tire smoke out of that 43 as well. He's been hard on the brakes to start this final stage. Now on the inside, here comes Ryan Blaney trying to take that spot away. There's Moves contact. him out of the way. A little contact there. Byron to the outside now in eight and nine. A little smoke back there. Looks like Keselowski off course. Brad Keselowski misses turn seven. Gets it going. Go. Nothing covered, buddy. You're Still fine. only Just two cautions in, in this race. For the stage breaks. And 42 laps to go as we come up on the halfway point of this race. Bubba Wallace doing a great job sitting here in second place. I know we haven't went but a lap or so on this restart, but that 23 car holding position. That's all he needs to do right now, Phil. He's got two fast cars right there behind him. In Briscoe and Reddick. Marty, what you got on this 23? He's got a hold position as Tyler Reddick tries to go past Chase Brisker right there. He'll get that pass done. So Bubba Wallace in the orange 23 right there has a lot going on behind the wheel. Why? Listen on the radio. So Bubba, we're three laps short from making it on one more, but we're going to do it. So just stay fuel. So there you go, sitting in second. So Jeff, walk me through as a driver, how you save three laps of fuel at a road course. That seems very difficult. Well, you got to shift early. You don't run the engine all the way up to the RPMs that you would for max performance. Just shift a little bit early. And then under braking, maybe not drive in quite as deep because you don't have to downshift as much. The problem is you got a guy like Tyler Reddick all over you. It's very difficult to not do that. But, you know, Marty, it's hard to go fast and save fuel. And in the middle of this chaos right here, Bubba's got to decide what's important. Am I, am I racing this track position, Steve, or am I racing speed? Yeah, that is the balance you have to do. But I will say the Toyotas overall, in my opinion, have found improvement from the other road courses, because I'm not sure they had enough pace at the previous road courses to pull any of these strategies off. Bell leading, Wallace in the Toyota in third, Hamlin in fifth. You know, it's really been well documented how bad they've been at the road courses. We don't know where they're going to finish today, Rick. But so far, I would say a gain for what they're lacking speed-wise. I can't believe Hamlin's sitting there in fifth place. I know they're on a different strategy, but everything we saw from him in stage one told me he wasn't going to finish in the top 25. But here he is. Like I said, they regrouped, settled in, found a pace, found a braking zone that he can deal with. And they're making it work, Parker. Hey guys, another great run here for another car. The 42, that red one right there, Ty Dillon for Petty GMS. These guys have struggled at the road courses here for both those Petty GMS cars. Qualified back in the 28th position, but used the strategy to get up here and just was, out, was in the top five, has now fallen back to eighth in a similar position there to Bubba Wallace, pitted on the same lap, trying to save a little bit of fuel so they can do this race on one more stop, but a great run for Ty Dillon. Happy contract weekend to his teammate Eric Jones. Got a multi-year extension with Petty GMS, trying to hold on to the ninth position right there as uh, Ross Chastain looks underneath him. Earlier this week, he said, I love the momentum that we're building at this race team, and I also appreciate the fact that my opinion matters here. Those are the reasons I wanted to stay here. Eric Jones with a nice contract in the books and trying to get another top 10 here at Indy today. It's getting rough once again. The one, the 34, the 99. As we see Michael McDowell, he put the bumper to the back of the one there just moments ago. So fighting for every spot on this racetrack. Differing strategies. We know everybody has to come back to pit road at least one more time. But right now it's Christopher Bell out in front by three and a half seconds in front of Reddick. Okay. 
Stage three underway here from Indianapolis Motor Speedway and that 43 of Eric Jones is currently running in the top 10 in the ninth position. Big week to be Eric Jones. He renewed his contract with Petty GMS Racing. He will return for his third season with the team. Now, he is pretty decent on road courses. He has three top fives at road courses and eight top tens at road course tracks this season. Now his best finish of the year was third at Auto Club. His last win though came back in 2019. It has been 104 starts since we've seen that 43 of Eric Jones. Again, running in the top 10 right now. And again, good week to be Garrett Jones as he renewed his contract with Petty GMS. Download the Goldfish free to play slots app. Visit goldfish racing.com. I want to thank them for this great camera angle. Looking back at how hard the drivers are having to work, especially right here with AJ Allmendinger. Parker. Right, and thanks to Goldfish Casino for this awesome shot because as you look at those hands of AJ Allmendinger and they're going all over the place like he's swatting a set of bees inside that car, that has been the problem all day. Very loose inside that 16 car throughout this day. At one point, AJ described it as undrivable. But do not despair if you're an AJ Allmendinger fan. Last year when he won this race, he said about midway through, we were not good, but we put ourselves in position and we found ourselves in victory at the end of the day. Maybe this could turn out the same way, Dave. Parker, have a coke and a smile and thank them for this onboard shot of Denny Hamlin. Remember earlier, this car was so evil, Denny spun on his own. They fixed that on the lap 12 caution. Now they are sipping some fuel to get to splitting their final run. They will pit just one more time. That should come in the next four or five laps, Rick. And you mentioned what a handful Denny Hamlin had as we take a look at the Toyota driver update for Denny. The start that he had was really fascinating. He started off, he's a, he's a great road course racer, but started off by spinning on his own. He was as low as 34th on the racetrack and has been as high as fourth on this strategy. We know that Denny is gonna have to come to pit road within the next four laps, but it's gonna be tight for some of these guys who came on pit road on lap 12. Yeah, it's gonna be tight for sure on fuel, but at this point, I think everybody knows the challenges that are in front of them. If we get a race recap on incidents, it would take two hours. <laughs> I mean, it, it's been it's been really been shocking the amount of contact. I mean, 14 different drivers have had issues already, and we I mean we're barely through the second stage. What I'm looking forward to is NASCAR America Motor Mouth on Monday and Wednesday when you guys get to talk about this and the fans get a call in and chat with you about it. I'm not even supposed to be on the show Monday. I might just call in to give my opinion on everything else. <laughs> just just so I can see if my man Burton down there's notebook is full. I'm calling and ask what exactly happened. I am on the show and I look forward to you calling in. <laughs> let's, ride, let's make a lap with Denny Hamlin. Show how difficult this racetrack. Part of the reason we've seen so much aggression, this part of the racetrack, four, and now he's coming to this very, very fast turn five, six complex, try to straighten it out all you can. Heavy up on the curbs, long back straightaway. But Junior, this heavy braking is where we've seen so many incidences. Hard on braking right here. It's a great passing opportunity. Multiple cars backwards in this part of the racetrack. And now a very slow, listen to the throttle, how slow this part of the racetrack is. They can cut that particular part of the racetrack pretty pretty much however they want. 
potential to lock the right front up into this break zone because you're kind of laterally loaded to the left. Not a lot of weight on the right front. This corner is one of my favorites. It looks like you can turn in sooner than you can, but you got a late apex. So turn in really, really late so you can get a little straight drive off. More of a 90 degree corner. More than a 93 the three degree corner coming on the 14 there than you think. So battle for the lead shaping up here. We know they're on two different strategies, but this eight car really showing that he has more pace than anybody out there today. How about this, Junior? A lap ago or two laps ago ran the fastest lap of the race, Tyler Reddick did. No surprise after the performance at Road America a few weeks ago. And if he hears that the 20 is trying to save fuel so that he can make it to his window, what Tyler Reddick is doing is pressuring him as much as he can, getting behind him and making him run harder. It's going to be very interesting how this plays out because, you know, you're probably going to see some yellows as well. So first thing you got to do is finally get where you think you can make the rest of the race on gas and then somehow keep it on the asphalt, which has been OK by yourself. A little bit tougher in a pack. It could be in the next two laps. on top of the pagoda here at Indianapolis Motor Speedway, arguably the best view in the house. The pagoda, what an iconic landmark here at IMS. And let me tell you, whether you're running four turns or 14 turns, this place is spectacular. But hey, that being said, there's been a lot of discussion about whether or not the Cup Series will continue to run 14 turns here on the road course at Indy. Track president and owner Roger Pinsky mentioned this week that he does plan on keeping the Indianapolis GP on the schedule for next season, but is open to reevaluating here for 2024. He also said he's not opposed to maybe alternating the oval and the road course every other year. So still a lot to be determined here for the future of what the Cup Series ranking looks like here at IMS. But either way, 14 turns here today look beautiful from the top of the infamous pagoda. Great battle for the lead. Look at the inside. Tyler Reddick trying to take the spot away from Christopher Bell. Reddick has more fuel, better tires. Can he get the pass? We know both of these cars will be coming to pit road here shortly. That was such an aggressive move. Reddick paid right there. Fortunately, he came out of the throttle. Now inside of him. He doesn't yeah. force the issue. Quarter. Was Bell going to try to get to pit road Quarter. here? Still there. We're going to make it from right there. What a race. Tyler Reddick now leading at Indianapolis. Tyler Reddick announced that he was leading this race team 
at the end of 23. Not 20, not this year, at the end of next year. Everybody said, well, they're done. They're not going to be able to run good. They're not going to be together. What does Tyler Reddick do a few weeks later? He comes here, sits on the pole, been leading this race. Tyler Reddick's not going to let that become a distraction. And Richard Childress doesn't need the car owner for it to be a distraction either. He needs this car to be running great, just like it is today, to recruit the best driver he can have to replace Tyler Reddick. Yeah, we just heard the radio communication in 20 car. They're calling Christopher Bell to pit road this next time by. Yeah, I don't think you'll be alone. We've seen a few cars come to pit road, seven in total. What does that mean? If you stay on the racetrack and the caution comes out, those seven will cycle in front of you. That's the Tyler Reddick concern. He now has the lead, but you just can't run as long as you want. But take care of it. That, 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 that was RC right yep. there. Make time, but take care of it. All right, so you're going to see pit road entry is going to get busy on the top of the screen. We know the 20 is coming. We'll see if the eight decides to come or if he wants to run an extra lap. It all really comes down the risk. The bottom of your screen, the right-hand side is the racetrack. If they run long into that corner, the straighter section, that's pit road as well. That's where we're going to see this 20. Pit him, pit him, pit him. Pit him, pit him, Does the eight come? That's going to be the question. I would he come. Does. Yeah, there you go. I love that move. You know he's coming behind you. Come with him. Now, the eight needs less fuel, so he should be OK. Blaney stays on the racetrack. You're going to see at the top of the screen more join. Let's see how good they do on their pit stop. This is going to be really interesting to see how much time Bell loses, needing almost 20 gallons of gas, Parker. Right, Steve, and you guys heard the call. It was right when he crossed the start finish line to start this lap, hit this lap. This was a scheduled stop, went as far as he could since lap 13 on this set of tires and fuel for Christian Bell. Once the left side right on the sign there, it's going to be four Goodyear tires and filling it full of fuel here for Christian Bell in the 20. We'll see how that slows down the stop. Also, the bottom of your screen, you see William Byron on pit road. This should be a shorter stop than the 20 because he's last on pit road and lap 33, four times for him, Marty. And just like William Byron, as Steve mentioned, this should be a shorter stop for Tyler Reddick as well, who is on an absolute mission today. Car, so good for him. And you heard the voice of Richard Childers. He's reminded him, take it easy a couple of times, but he built a six-second gap over Ryan Blaney. The eight off pit road. We'll see where he cycles out once everybody else pits. And looks, you know, a car length in front turns into six, growing to 10, growing to 20, growing to 30, because he's back to speed quicker. So. Good job by the 20, waiting on fuel, but now you see the penalty it takes. Yeah, we saw Tyler Reddick didn't have to take as nearly as much fuel as what we had to see Christopher Bell take. And that's new to this car. When we had five lug nuts, you could almost fill the entire tank up by the time you change four tires. It took 12 seconds, 11 and a half seconds. But now that these tire changers with the single lug can change tires in nine seconds, there's just not enough, you know, gravity didn't change, right? right? The fuel only flows so fast. Right. There you go, a comparison. That's a perfect opportunity. That pit time, that's purely fuel. I believe that, you know, the, the 20 lug nuts, I bet, are almost the exact same as the 8s. Blaney out front now. He also came to pit road on lap 33. That's the same strategy that we saw out of Tyler Reddick. Almondinger running second. And once again, the 6. Brad Kozlowski stopped on the racetrack. This is on the back straightaway, just out of the turn five and six. Somehow or another, had some trouble getting through that switch back. Let's take a look. Here comes Brad sideways. Man, yeah, he was out of control. Just trying to make lap time. You know, we see it on the ovals as well as on the road courses. You got to push this car, but when it steps out, it comes around quickly. Brad's had an eventful day, to say the least. Yeah, running 30th right now. Dave. Ty Gibbs on pit road, his second cup start, filling in for Kurt Busch. The car was going really free that last time. There you see the wrench going in the rear window. That'll change the balance of the car, trying to help this young 19-year-old get around this track. Kurt watching at home. We hope that he's feeling well and getting better. Can't wait to get him back on the racetrack, back in this 45 car. Kurt, such a fierce competitor. Miss him being here. Blaney on pit road now. I love that entry. I mean, he is gassed up on that lane trying to get as much. <laughs> well, you don't want to make a mistake. Right here is where pit road speed starts. Marty. 
Rick, I'm sure Steve can uh, understand Jonathan Hassler. I'm sure his heart was in his throat, Steve, when he saw that six car briefly stopped on the racetrack, thought the caution might come out. That would have really called out Ryan Blaney. Car has been really good, but somehow they have to make up the six second gap that Tyler Reddick built on that run. Blaney saying car too free on exit. That's his biggest issue, and it's been his issue all day long. And look at this move by Jonathan Hassler. Fuel only. Steve, do you like this call here? No fresh good in your tires. Oh, and he stalls it. He stalls it. Trying to get out of the stall. Only a second or so, but you don't know what that would have cost him on the track. All right, fuel only. So he thinks even as quick as tires can be changed, let's get track position with gas only. So this is Blaney leaving pit road. Tyler Reddick on the right-hand side. Downshifts two, three downshifts. Turns right. That stall could be the difference. Tyler Reddick maintains position over Ryan Blaney. They were on the same strategy now. Fresher tires for the eight of Tyler Reddick, but track position for that 12 of Ryan Blaney. He's now in front of Christopher Bell. What a great call for gas only with all of these options and the new pit stops and the new car. I never even considered that uh, even a choice for the 12th car. That's A plus kind of shaking that magic eight ball and coming up with a new plan. It's a great call and you know Blaney's got to be kicking himself after making that stall on pit road and he's going to have the steering wheel in his teeth trying to chase down this eight car, Marty. And listen, I know he's probably upset with himself for stalling it on pit road, but you got to give it to Hassler. Jonathan Hassler, his crew chief, number one, Steve, for the fuel only car. But we mentioned it. That gap was six seconds. They've cut a lot of that down. Now, can Blaney run him down on the racetrack? That's the question, Dave. On pit road now, the nine of Chase Elliott, who had gone from 26th to 11th before the cycle of pit stop started. Good run for him. He'll have to, though. There was no way they were going to go 45 laps on fuel, so they have to come now with everyone else for this last pit stop. Bottom of your screen, Martin Turex Jr. His car was going really free at the end of that last run, so he'll also get Sunoco fuel to take it to the end and an adjustment to make that car more compliant. You see pit road is a busy place. And at this point, you know, we talk a lot about how you win, Rick, but it's also how do you finish the best for your car? For different teams, it's different. We see Cindric on the racetrack, Suarez on the racetrack, Almendinger continuing to run. So he was in the gravel once today. He kind of knows, you know, my chance of winning but with, a, with this creative fuel stretch is kind of out the window. So now just run as long as you can, pit under green, and maybe just have fresh tires. And maybe your, your car will hang. We know tires haven't been worth a whole lot, but. You know, at this point, the 16 can only do and can only play the hand that's been dealt. We could see him go at least another 10 laps as far as fuel is concerned for A.J. Allmendinger. Yeah, so, you know, he, he, he knows he's already running long. Uh, at this point, I would just imagine he's going to stay on the racetrack for all 10. Parker. And Steve, just to add on to that, once he got to that clean air of the lead, if you locked his lap times, he started clicking off some of the fastest lap times on the racetrack, which is just padding that difference for him if he does choose to come down here and pit and maybe do a sort of fuel stop like we saw in the 12 or put those tires on. I think this sort of opens up their strategies a little bit. Dan. Dan. Getting really bad. Calm and fail, Frankie. Just keep him calm. I like that, Parker. It's it's when you have a town like AJ Allmendinger, Clear track is your friend, right? Just, hey, let's not be creative. Let's just go run faster than everyone else. Third fastest lap last time by for A.J. Allmendinger. The fastest was Tyler Reddick, who now is up to eight. And he is currently the only one that can make it all the way to the end on fuel. At least he's the one leading that group. Reddick is running eighth. Blaney is ninth, but it's Almondinger, last year's winner and the winner of the Xfinity race yesterday, who's out front here at the Brickyard. Five laps complete here at Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Now, when we go to road course races, we always talk about the road course ringers in the field, and there's one unexpected one here. 
in today's race. That is the young 19 year old of Ty Gibbs. As we see the 16, the leader of AJ Allmendinger coming to pit road. What must be an unexpected or unplanned pit stop. We'll get some information there and keep you updated. But as I was saying, that 45 car that is usually piloted by Kurt Busch, 2311 racing has taken Kurt out of the car due to concussion protocol. And it's put Ty Gibbs in there. Now Ty made his cup series debut filling in for Kurt last week after Kurt had an issue at Pocono hitting the wall in practice. Ty finished last week's race in 16th. Now Ty Gibbs, like I said, notoriously great here on road courses, is making his second Cup Series start on here on the Indy Road Course. Now, we did hear from team owner Denny Hamlin, and he mentioned that it wasn't just that incident last week at Pocono that's keeping Kurt out of the car. Kurt has seen some pretty hard hits numerous times this season, and as in coordinates with concussion protocol, they feel that it's safer to keep him out of the car at this time. Kurt Busch, a playoff driver and a champion of the series, though, hopes to get back in ASAP as the young Ty Gibbs, the 19, holds it down for him in the 54. taking the PGA Tour's very best just to get to this point. Now, it'll take more. The FedEx Cup playoffs begin August 11th through the 14th with the St. Jude Championship from Memphis. Coverage on Golf Channel, NBC, and Peacock. This aerial coverage brought to you by GEICO as we look once again at the Brickyard Golf Course, Brickyard Crossing there, and a couple holes on the inside of this very famous racetrack as we see the 38 that's Todd Gilman he is out front he came to pit road on lap 32 so Gilliland Kyle Busch Bowman and hand all still have to come to pit road we're gonna see Kyle Busch make the move now yeah real quick on this 38 of Gilliland what a great weekend had a great qualifying effort talked about his transition from the truck series over to the cup series and how to use all the driver data and the SMT to improve his weekends and, you know, he's going to end up cycling back after the pit stop, but at some point you need to go out there and you need to lead. You need to remind yourself you have the talent to be in the Cup Series. It's an uphill battle. We continue to say it takes 70 or 80 starts to figure it out. He's very young in his Cup Series career, but doing a nice job in what is a very chaotic race. Yeah, 22 years old, and these are his first laps that he's ever led in the Cup Series. He'd never, been, he'd never been to this racetrack, qualifies in the top five in the first round of his, in, the, in, the, in the session of qualifying, able to qualify in the top ten. So. Amazing job just for a limited time on the racetrack, Marty. Kyle Busch pits from third here, and I agree with what Steve said earlier, considering their best road course finish of the year has been 28 to this point. They've collected some stage points today, much better performance from Toyota and Joe Gibbs Racing here today. It may not be a top five, but a nice performance in them. And Junior, I'd love to know your thoughts on this, you know, all the contract talk with Kyle Busch. Do you get the sense that maybe the ice is melting here and they'll get a contract done soon with Kyle and Joe Gibbs Racing? What are your thoughts? I just pay attention to the way Kyle does his interviews and if he's frustrated and he's giving you you know negative remarks in his interviews it doesn't mean it means to me that things must not be going that well the way he wants them to do or he's frustrated about it when you bring it up over the last couple of weeks the conversation has gotten a lot more mild and there's been some smiles on the face of that driver the 18 car I think things are getting a little bit closer as he's starting to understand how to get what he wants and get a get you know be driving the race car I think that 18 car is the one he wants to drive I think they're going to come to, to, to some terms soon. We saw right this time, behind him. Pit road this time. All right, pit road this time. I think that's the 38. Right behind him was the 48 of Bowman. Um, on the right-hand side, though, the 15 of Joey Hand. This driver, very well known in the sports car world. He's won at Le Mans. 
Uh, he's come over and committed to run all the road courses in this car for Rick Ware Racing. I love that strategy of continuing to give him laps. You just talked about it, Junior, of how little bit of time you get on the racetrack before the race. Joey Hand doing a nice job. He had a little contact earlier uh, that ended up damaging, I think, the jack post on this car. So that, I think, is going to hurt his pit stop speed. But nice to see Joey Hand enjoying his NASCAR experience. Parker? Right, Steve. I had a funny conversation with him yesterday talking about his NASCAR experience. And he said, you know, when I showed all that speed of Road America, that was really gratifying. I enjoyed it. But he said, once I got in the race and I was in that top 15, it was pretty evident that a lot of guys didn't feel like they would see me again very often. So uh, the aggressiveness was quite high. He said that's going to be one of the biggest shocks. And we hear that a lot from drivers coming from the sports car open world. The aggressiveness level of racing the Cup Series on these road courses. Right, we've seen. Danny oh. Kvyat there has got an issue. Yeah, Danny, and off the pace, we're going to have to see. This Sounds is... like we have a flat right rear. You see the tire, I believe, on the left rear. One of the rear tires is flat. The car is a little bit crooked as it's going around the racetrack. He's in, what, turn 11 right here. It's kind of a little bit of a dangerous spot, a blind yeah. right-hander, hand out the window, but, you know, limited spotters around the area. Just hopefully everybody, I guess he's far enough off, driver's right. It'll oh. get tight here, though, as he comes through to 12. I actually wonder if it's not flat, no flat tires, and there's just a drive line issue. Right. Oh. Yeah, there's something there. I saw the left rear change directions like it has a tow link broken. You see the damage above the left rear tire like it's made contact maybe with a wall. He's come all the way from turn four. That's where he had spun. Yeah, there's definitely an issue. Good point, Steve. See that left rear moving around a little bit. He's on pit road now. You know, he's one of these drivers like Joey Hand that comes, comes into this series and has to go to do these restarts and all this crazy stuff that you see in the Cup Series. And, you know, those guys, when they come in, they think, man, they just don't like me. What they don't realize, they treat everybody like that. <laughs> like it's, right. it's just the nature of the beast and how hard you race here. Joey Hand in this 15 car, though, he has earned the respect of the drivers that he's raced with. He's done a nice job to put his car in really good positions, opportunity to have good finishes. Here, and he's tall. Listen to some of the Ford drivers talk about how they've helped them become better race car drivers. Yeah, I talked to Calvin Fish. He's the, the analyst on NASCAR or on NBC's IMSA coverage. He knows so many of those drivers in the sports car world. And I think, oh, oh man, oh, big, nice. big hit Huge here for Ty Dillon. 42. Wow. And that brings out the caution. That is a big impact for the 42. You see the door ripped open. Turn one area. The five car and also the five. down there. Both these cars involved in the same accident, I believe. Ty was, you see. and you see a lot of damage there to the driver's side. Oh, I got pedal. And a bad birthday for Kyle Larson. Yeah, I don't know what happened. You okay? Yeah, I think so. That, that, I think so. That's a driver evaluating himself. It takes a minute just to collect yourself and figure out how you are feeling. Look at the right, right, the right front wheel. We don't see much damage to the wheels in these cars these days, but that wheel is distorted so badly from some contact somehow. All right, we're done. That's a hard hit. Sometimes you can look at the damage and kind of have an idea of what happened, but I'll be honest, where this car is sitting and where the five sitting, I, I'm not sure what could have led to this. As you see Ty climbing out, there's Kyle Larson. Kyle was, out. Kyle was already multiple laps down, just trying to finish his day out. So the AMR safety team there uh, attending to Ty Dillon as Kyle Larson is going to jog his way back into the infield. And I think Kyle and him is going to talk about it for a second. Wanted to figure out what went wrong there. Let's take a look. Oh, oh boy. my goodness. Oh, and I'm sure Kyle was coming over to apologize. I. I some sort of mechanical issue on the five car for him. Look at that. He is flying when he comes in there. So I heard him say, wow. I have a pedal, which looking back now, maybe he didn't have brakes and now he does have brakes. That's that's the one thing that seems to make sense. And to your point, that is why he went over to talk to Ty Dillon. I'd say we're I'd say we're lucky that wasn't worse than it Man. was. I mean, that was huge. I agree, Jeff. That's a big impact. We, oh, oh, my goodness. Gosh. I mean, the speeds that they're getting going into turn one, and if Kyle Larson didn't have brakes or the brakes weren't working, we're talking he could have been going 150, 160 miles an hour there at contact. Yeah, what a what a scary situation for Kyle Larson. Ty Dillon didn't know it was coming, but, but Larson did. Larson's driving in the corner. 
he knows he's not going to be able to stop and just trying to avoid minimize hitting it's just a it's a terrible situation to be in let's go listen to what he said this is just before the round. Yeah. I'm seeing all the pedal really hard, though. Yeah, standing on the pedal really hard. So he asked about the brake fans. I'm not sure if they were cycling on and off. I'm not sure if maybe they see some temperature in the rotor, in the braking zone, somewhere on a camera. I mean, it seems like a very odd question. After a restart, that makes sense. Hey, did you put your fans back on, right? Dale, I might ask you to shut them off under yellow and turn them back on as soon as we get good. But we've been in a long green flag run. It was 22 lap green flag run. It's just a very odd question to be asked in the middle of a green flag cycle. Could he have, could he have been answering Larson? Larson may have been saying, hey, I've got problems with my brakes. And then he says, have you turned your fans on? Yeah, could hard. that have been a, an For answer? Sure. It, it just, it's an odd conversation at, at this point during the race. And it was clear that the five car was not able to slow his vehicle down. Very violent crash here between the five of Kyle Larson and the 42 of Ty Dillon. Both walk away from this one. As a matter of fact, Larson jogged over just to check on Ty Dillon. is out here at IMS. Only 20 laps to go here before we find out who is taking home the checkered flag on the Indy Road Course. Now, Joey Hand, the 15, was out front before we saw a number of cars here bring it onto pit road for what's most likely their final pit stop of the race. Now, just before that 15 was in the lead, we saw the 38 of Todd Gilliland cycle through to lead his first ever laps in the Cup Series. And now with that, not only have we seen all three rookies lead laps this season, but we have seen every single full-time driver in the Cup Series leading laps at some point in the season. A true testament to not only the parity of this year, but really the high quality of competition that we have right now in this series. Taking a step further, there are only five full-time drivers right now in this series that are still looking for their first career win says a lot about the competition that we're seeing right now on the racetrack. 20 laps to go, and as pit cycles circle through, it looks like the eight of Tyler Reddick is back out front. NASCAR fans, don't let anything pass you by. The official app of NASCAR Tracks lets you stay up to date on the latest race and event information from all your favorite tracks. Search NASCAR Tracks in the App Store to download for free. It's the NASCAR Cup Series Racing Verizon 200 at the Brickyard. And under the first caution for an incident today, and it was a big one. It's been a big weekend, as a matter of fact, as we look back from the Coca-Cola Pace Cam on the pace car, but just about to cross the brickyard right there. And earlier yesterday, the legends of this racetrack got together for a photo opportunity. And when I say legends, it's one after the other. Drivers that have won at this 
such a prestigious racetrack. You see Elio Castroneves there. Casey course, Kane. Yep. Jeff Gordon. Our old Dale Jarrett. You see Brad Kay talking. I saw Bobby Rahal earlier. Kyle Busch, Kevin Harvick, as you mentioned. One of the cool things here, Mario Andretti. You think about it, this was a tradition started by Dale Jarrett kissing the bricks. Well, Mario Andretti, he hadn't raced anymore. He wasn't racing, so he never really kissed the bricks here at Indianapolis, but he did that tradition with DJ. So I'm going to tell you, you know, if you're a race fan, that everyone that was down there was unbelievable, but I'm not sure anybody oozes more cool than Mario. Yes. Like, I mean, even to, to <laughs> everything he's done in his life, hanging around him, he, he, I mean, he sets cool to a new level. Like Parker. Kind of. Right. Kind well, of Parker. Well, maybe not. I don't know if I'm that cool by any means. But a guy that is pretty cool and has put his driver in a great position here is Adam Stevens, the crew chief for Christopher Bell. So you use some great strategy to get that track position, get to the lead. What more do you now need to beat Tyler Reddick? Well, um, he's pretty fast, to be honest with you. Uh, can I just say I'm so happy that we have some speed in our car at a road course for once. Uh, Bell's such a phenomenal talent. He's so good on the road courses, and we just haven't given anything to race with this year. And finally, we got something to race with, and we're close. But uh, I think if we can get the lead on the restart, we could probably hold him off on equal tires here. But uh, these restarts are tough. We've seen a lot of contact and craziness amongst those restarts. What have you guys discussed and where he should position himself on the restart? We haven't yet. I think we're going to have that discussion here in a minute. But uh, it all depends on the row behind you and if you get dive bombed or not. And uh, who can keep the tires from locking up down into one? That's the money question there, guys. Where do you want to be going down the brakes on this restart? It's not a question of if you get dive bombed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they're going to, unless you can outbreak everybody, they're going to come in there at you. So, you know, I, I have to go to the front row. I mean, I just have to pick. If I'm the, if I'm Bell, I got to go to the front row and try to outbreak Reddick and keep from getting run into. The reason we're under caution, a very violent accident. Take a look at the speeds here. Yeah, in slow motion, doesn't really do it justice, but it just, you know, we talk about racing cars, driving cars, and how things slow down and we, we are under control. You don't realize how fast you're going until you no longer have control or you no longer can slow the car down. And that's a great example of just how quickly these guys are entering turn one. If you have a failure, it's going to be big. Looking back, and it will be Reddick and Christopher Bell making up that first row. And so a few cars came to pit road. They're going to restart all the way back. Joey Hamm, we were talking about him when that big accident occurred. He's going to restart 19th, first car on fresh tires. Everyone in front is pretty equal except for poor Ryan Blaney. Gas only call to try to have a chance during the green flag cycle. But unfortunately now, if you look right here, tire wear, everybody's in the green except for Blaney. His tire's red. They're worn out. So we'll see if it works for the 12 car. Tyler Reddick, the control car, the race leader on the inside as they will enter turn number one. Christopher Bell in the number 20 on the outside of row one. And green flag back in the air. Now the race to turn one. Bell did not get the launch that he needed on that outside lane. That's been an advantage to Blaney, who's trying to jump on the outside of Reddick. Blaney trying to outbreak Reddick into turn one. Reddick with a good turn. Three wide behind him. Reddick clears the 12. The 20 drops back to third. Look at AJ Allmendinger on the inside of the 20 car. Big brake smoke coming out of the 16 as he tries to make the pass on the 20 of Bell. They continue to make contact. Now we're going to be three wide. Heading into turn seven. Chase Elliott on the outside. Allmendinger trying to outbreak Chase Elliott. He does through seven. Three wide behind him. This has been terrible for Christopher Bale, losing spots right and left. They're still attacking him. Once you lose momentum, man, it's like, oh, oh big, big crash behind us. The four of Harvick once again around. The four of the 48. Alex Bowman backing up, getting it going once again. Both cars are going to move on. Damn no caution. Off. I four think the four cars. cars. Yeah, yeah I'm seat. sorry, Junior. Yeah, you and I saw the same thing. The left rear and the four looks like heavy damage. It's going to absolutely be mechanical. Probably another tow link. This could end his day. I'm sorry, Bob. I'm sorry, Bob. 
This is the driver who came in as the first driver out of the playoffs. We thought it was going to take a win, but a more points lost today. I think that it moved into a must win for sure, as we see Chase Elliott and A.J. Allmendinger side by side into one. There's another look. Sliding already was the 48 of Bowman. So many cars having to avoid going through the grass. Live action. Look at the look at the battle. They all got single file this time through five and six in order to set themselves up for seven. That's a fight for third. Almondinger has it right now. You know, and the, and the bad start for Bell couldn't have been better for Blaney. Out of row two, goes three wide, gets himself up into the top two. That's a real fortunate situation on those older tires that we mentioned. And Christopher Bell cannot shake Michael McDowell. He'd love to get, you know, by himself and be able to try to run back down these guys and get some of these lost positions. But Michael McDowell is on his inside, his outside, fighting him every corner. Chase Elliott now. Is it going to turn 12? Has the advantage. Elliott takes third away from A.J. Allmendinger. Smart move by A.J. No, it just doesn't have quite the pace the nine car does. Doesn't push it. Don't lose. Talking about his bounce and his race car, not happy at all with the back end. No grip. Loose, and that really hurts him in these corners. The school board, listen to A.J. Oh, I'm going to make it cut. Hey, man, do not hurt yourself. Whatever you do, do not hurt yourself. If you can't make it, it's just not that big a deal, dude. Just wish we checked you big four to give me a chance, you know? Cool yourself off, try to get you some water. Planning about heat in the car. Pushing himself beyond what he physically thinks he's capable of. Look at him, though. Still fighting, still working his car. Worked up. hard yesterday. Yeah, remember, he did double duty. Worked hard yesterday. It's a little bit hotter, a little bit more uncomfortable today. You have to wonder if all those miles are catching up with him. Not only did double duty, but won the Xfinity race yesterday. And now, holding on to the fourth position, Byron right behind him for fifth. Christopher Bell's finally able to get clear of those cars behind him and close in on William Byron here. Yeah, Christopher Bell's got to collect himself. He was sitting there on the front row, thinking win, 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 didn't get a launch. Everybody built momentum on him. Now he fell all the way back to sixth. It's so frustrating as a driver. Race is far from over. Guys like Michael Jordan and Denny Hamlin, obviously, when he's not behind the wheel, are going to look at this race and say, what a great job we have done. They have locked up Tyler Reddick for 2024 to join 2311. That race team, as we take a look at the Xfinity fastest lap, and it's turned by Tyler Reddick. 90-second lap for Tyler Reddick in that number eight. We saw this in Road America also. No surprise that Tyler Reddick's making speed on the road course. I think you also got to give RCR and that group a lot of credit for bringing winning race cars to the racetrack. Tyler Reddick, when he was hired by this team, he was hired to be able to improve things, push things along, challenge them. He's done that. He's allowed them to be, be able to improve their performance, improve their cars. It's going to be a tough loss for this company, but they're in a much better position before they hired Tyler as he steps away from this team. And it's amazing that that's what we're talking about this season when he's still running for a championship for RCR and he has another year with that organization. But it was shocking news, Marty. Well, restart of the day to Ryan Blaney. Keep in mind, they have 18 lap older tires than everybody else in front of them and around them. But somehow on that restart, Blaney went up and gained a couple of spots. So, Steve, do you agree with the call Jonathan Hassler made in taking no tires last time? The older Goodyears, as you can see right there, much older than everybody else around them. Blaney has made it work earlier today, making it work right now. But what does that tell you about their strategy moving forward in on points as of now with five races to go? Well, I think the conversation needs to be internally within the team. Do you think it's a win or do you think it's points? What's your way to go into the playoffs? And the gas only call for the 12 car was the, hey, I think we need to win. So we're going to be aggressive under green. I thought this was going to work out worse on this restart than it did. Blaney's doing an amazing job because points wise, if you're only racing the 19, I think you take four tires under green. So, you know, I like the call, 
uh, and it's going to, I think, work out for the 12, but I think over the next four races, they're going to have to just understand what they're trying to do as a race team, win or score points, because we have another road course at Watkins Glen in a couple weeks away, and it'll, the same choices will be presented again. Well, Steve, this decision to only take fuel also puts him in a little bit of a precarious position as far as tire wear. I know that we've said these tires have been very durable, but are they going to challenge the tires longer than anyone else at the end of this race? I think these good years they brought here, though, are, are can run more than a fuel tank. You just don't want to start locking them up. I think you could damage him if you start flat spotting, but uh, you know, Ryan doing a great job behind the wheel and showing why he was one of the favorites that was picked uh, ending into it. You see on the bottom of the screen, the four of Kevin Harvick, but back to that points conversation, he was 17th coming in. So with him having a bad day, the 12 and the 19, that gap to make the playoffs is pretty big. Now their biggest fear is a new winner. Dave. Steve, great news. Ty Dillon has walked from the infield care center under his own power after he got majorly surprised, it looked like. What did you feel? Yeah, all I saw was a blue flash, and that, that's about the hardest I've been hit by anything. So um, first, I'm just grateful to God that I'm okay, um, and uh, these cars are, are safe enough to take a shot like that. Uh, I just hate it. It's just um, we were having a good run with our Ferris Camaro, and just blindsided, really. So I'm, I'm all good. I just... Um, it's been a tough year, but I'm never going to quit. We're going to keep getting better, and uh, we're running good. And just things are happening. So you'll have you'll have days like that. You'll have times like that. You just never give up and go on to the next one. Glad to see you're okay. We did attempt to talk to Kyle Larson, who was released uh, after being checked a few minutes ago, and Kyle said, uh, no, I, I just want to go talk to my guys. You guys thought maybe a mechanical of some sort. He wants to know what happened to his five car to start this thing. I can understand that. Before he talks to the media, he wants to go get with his team and see why he entered turn one with so much speed. What mechanically on that race car uh, let the driver of the five down. So good to hear from Ty Dillon, though. Top yeah. of the screen, you see the hood coming up on the 48 car. Another, is another look. look at that crash. Oh, All four tires off the ground to the five and just flying a, through the air. Yeah, just a flush hit. When they hit door, you know, hit side to side on that right front tire, it was just a really hard hit. And you have to remember the 42 of Ty Dillon. They made the announcement, uh, Petty GMS and Ty Dillon, they will be going different directions at the end of this season. So he's still looking for a ride for 2023. Reddick out front here at Indy. to go here at Indianapolis Motor Speedway. That 34 of Michael McDowell currently running in the top 10 in the eighth position. To no surprise, Michael has a pretty extensive road course history, but it's been a pretty eventful week for that 34 team. NASCAR gave them a penalty following last week's race at Pocono for modifying a single supplied part. Caution is out on the racetrack for the 41. Oh, just kidding. We're still under green here. Plenty of turns, plenty of room on the racetrack to keep things moving as we approach 11 laps to go. But as I was saying, that 34 team facing a penalty. Now, they have appealed the penalty, but if it were to go through a $100,000 fine for the team and a loss of 100 driver and owner points, plus a four-week suspension for crew chief Blake Harris. Now, as I said, the plan for the team was to... Uh, challenge the penalty, which is why the crew chief Blake Harris is still here. But again, a strong run after the missile reach the floor of Michael McDowell as he currently sits in the eighth position.
Next Sunday, the NTT IndyCar Series will head to Music City to race on the streets of Nashville. The coverage at 3 p.m. Eastern on NBC and Peacock. What a weekend it has been here at Indianapolis. The IndyCar Series racing yesterday as well as the Xfinity Series. Now the Cup Series taking center stage. We see Ryan Blaney trying to stay just in front of that nine of Elliott. That's a fight for the second position now. Blaney, a lot older tires than what Elliott has. We'll see if he can hang on to that position. And we see the 12 car having a lot of trouble, kind of just moving around all day long in the braking zones. And I think we'll see more and more of that as this nine puts the pressure on him. And we also see the nine offset just a little bit in the braking zone. I think that's just as much to get a little cool air to the brakes and to worry Blaney to be out of his mirror. Uh, not really an attempt to pass, but as he's following this 12 car, he is putting a little more temperature in his brake pedal, in his brakes. That gives him a chance to get a little cool air. It's a great shot right here, Jeff, to see them working through this very technical part of the track. Wow, Chase Elliott using all of the racetrack and some right there. Head to turn 12. But Chase sees that 12 car moving around under braking and knows that's a weak spot. So the key, this part of the racetrack right here, very slow. 12, 13, 14 complex. So does he go through 13 right here? Now watch Chase Elliott. He wants to try to straighten this out as much as he can because it leads to that straight. He had to lift a little bit right there, but he wanted, if he could just enter with, with Blaney, just right on his bumper, I don't think Blaney can hold him back under brakes. So if he goes to the offset just a little bit here as well to get a little cool air. Hopefully to make right him push side. that 12 car. Here he goes. Right side corner, right Blaney. side door. Even right, there, right, right, door, the nine, you can see the 12 yep. move around, and that was a huge overbreak right there. That was amazing he could beat him that badly. Shows you where the 12 is struggling. I'm going to be interested what this next clean lap looks like for the 9, just because he could almost match Reddick's lap time while chasing the 12 down. How much was he being held up by the 12? I think we're going to find out here in the next lap and a half or so. Reddick with a comfortable lead does not want a yellow with that 9 car now in second place. Is three and a half seconds comfortable for Tyler Reddick with Chase Elliott behind him? I think absolutely. The eight car's got the pace. If he sits in there and doesn't make any mistakes, he can put the laps together to win this race. But a yellow and a fast nine car on a road course, we got Road America all over again. Just remind you that NASCAR America Post Race Show will be on Peacock at the conclusion of the race. We'll be here on NBC all the way to the top of the hour, six o'clock Eastern as Almondinger now putting some pressure on Ryan Blaney. This is impressive because I thought Almondinger was going to fade, talking about being uncomfortable in the car and also knowing that this, just, this car just doesn't have a good balance. But this shows how good AJ is. Just a superior road course racer. Now he's seen the weakness also of Blaney. Now just eight laps to go here. We want to go through the field. We'll start with Reddick and Martin. Yeah, quick top five through the field. Rick, Tyler Reddick trying to name, add his name to the list here on the triple header crossover weekend to Alexander Rossi, who won an IndyCar, A.J. Allmendinger, who won yesterday in Xfinity. But is there a concern maybe on the eight? Listen on the radio. That radio was Richard Childress saying, hey, remind him, take it easy on the brakes. I'm seeing a little bit of red. I don't want to see that. Tyler Reddick looks like cruising to a second win, Dave. Dale Jr. gets the gold star of the day because, indeed, brake problems for Chase Elliott most of the day. They were not to his liking. So, yes, ducking out to cool them just a little bit before he made that aggressive pass on Ryan Blaney for second. And remember, seven of his 17 career wins have come on tracks like this, Marty. Ryan Blaney trying to hold on on those 18-lap older tires and those around him. But the bigger picture for Ryan Blaney, which Jonathan Hassler has reminded him several times, keep that in mind. Kevin Harvick set problems today. Eric Almarola had problems. So in the point picture, Ryan Blaney has gained 39 points as they sit right now. So he would have a fairly comfortable lead, Dave, or actually Parker, heading into these final four races of the regular season. And Marty, that's part that's trying to pass him there. The 16 and AJ Allmanger told me before the race today it was feeling eerily similar to yesterday or last year when he won this race. He said we weren't great in practice or qualifying. 
We worked great to the middle of the race, but we put ourselves in position late, and that's where we were able to get the win when the 14 and the 11 wrecked each other there. So he feels like right now, maybe this is coming together to put him in that same position. We heard where he was struggling with the heat inside that car. He actually ran out of water, hasn't had water this entire last stage. So really putting in a tough effort here for A.J. Allmere in that 16 car. Behind him, the 24, William Byron, who's been very competitive today and now turning to the most competitive lap times on the racetrack the last couple laps. He was the fastest car on the track as he caught the 16 and the 12 as they've all tried to work by that 12 of Ryan Blaney. He has serious speed here as he's running in the fifth position. Steve, you wanted to know about the nine car, what kind of lap time he might run now that he's clear in second place. Almost three tenths better than Reddick, who's in the lead. Chase Elliott trying to go after his sixth straight top two finish. That's incredible. We've had so much parity, so much uncertainty all year long. Nobody's figured this car out where they run week to week. It's outside of track house, there's been no consistency in any team except for this nine car. Yeah, it's coming on the right time of year, right? The dog days of summer, that's when the championship favorites kind of make their moves, start scoring those playoff points. You see he has 25 to Chastain's 14. So while those top twos, as you pointed out, very impressive, he'd like to get that second and turn it into a win to score some more of those valuable playoff points. And he's going to get quite a few playoff points at the end of the regular season in five more races. Right now he's leading and has a handsome lead uh, over second place in the regular season standings and you get 15 playoff points for winning the regular season. Elliott still three and a half seconds behind Tyler Reddick so he has not closed in at all with just under six laps to go but a big damage here for Christopher Bell the right front and it'll bring the caution out. Another restart here at the road course. Man. Obviously, the tires fly on the front. Is it? Bring it, bring it straight to us. Fender's missing. Did he flat spot it and blow a tire? Did he have contact? Let's take a look and see what happened to the 20. There's the fender on the racetrack. That's an issue. So, right here, this is from 11 to 12. Heavy braking. Jeff, you talk about how awkward the braking is. Oh, misses the corner. And then, boom. Oh, yeah, that fender's right in the middle of the front straightaway. Tells me he flat spotted, spot, spotted the tire into turn 12. We kept talking about it, kept waiting for it to happen, and it just failed the tire. Man. Well, well so first it's decision time. I am comfortable with saying I expect the leads to stay on the racetrack. Tires how, have not how many been huge. Of them? Well, that's the magical question, Rick. <laughs> if you can answer that, then you need to go down nine floors and sit on a pit box because I, you know, the truth is, I don't know. Are Briscoe in 16th, for, perhaps? Or Hamlin in 15th? You know, do they say, hey, to improve, I have to have tires? Do you want to be on offense or defense here? I would pit probably, if I couldn't start in the top 14, 13, 14, I would probably be looking at tires. But we'll see if everybody agrees with me when we come back after break. 28 cars on the lead lap, six to go. Pits will open with five to go here in Indianapolis. Live look here on the 20 of Christopher Bell as he brings it in following that last incident. Heavy damage to that race car. I don't know if you can see the right front there, but the entire wheel well has been destroyed as that as that tire comes off the car. You can see, you can see where that tire blew and the cords are obviously showing through there. That 20 of Christopher Bell, the stage win already today. He was having a strong run. Mind you, Christopher is locked into the playoffs with a win last weekend, excuse me, two weekends ago at New Hampshire. So hoping for a strong run here today, but unfortunately doesn't look like they're going to finish in the position they were hoping for.
Under five laps remaining. NASCAR Cup Series from Indianapolis. The Verizon 200 at the Brickyard. And right now it's Tyler Reddick up front. The crew chiefs earning their money right now as they will decide how far back will you make that decision to come to pit road. And we're getting ready to find out. Pace car is going to turn left. If you go a little bit straight past there, that'll be pit entry. So I assume Reddick, Elliott, Blaney, this no-brainer for the front two, three, four rows. The question just becomes, who is the first to think tires matter? It is going to be an absolute slugfest. So I don't know if tires are going to help you keep your car in control or not. 11 of Hamlin, first taker. Field starts to split from there. We see the 6 of Brad K. Kind of goes in either direction. The 11 was running 14th, but a lot of cars choose to stay on the racetrack. We'll yeah. see if tires pay off here. Steve Jr. and I were talking about this, and we feel like that What's most important right now, even if you're back further in the field, is just trying to avoid the wreck that's going to happen in turn one. Like, it's not about speed. It's just trying to find your way through that chaos. Dave. Well, Alan Gustafson is, I believe you're counting cars, which is allowed in this, to see what you have to deal with here. Uh, your man is in a great spot now with that gap caught up. How is it for the end for him? Yeah, we'll see. I mean, it's not been a super easy day for us. Certainly in the Napa guys battle through, Chase has done a good job. I think our car is pretty good. You know, they each really good too. So it's all about the launch here. And you know, who knows what's gonna happen in turn one. It's just real wide and then funnels down. So it's gonna be crazy. All right, he'll be watching. Marty? Hanging out with Randall Burnett as driver Tyler Reddick's been fantastic today. Kind of feels like Road America all over the go. The, the nine and the eight battling each other. Steve called it, it's gonna be a slugfest on this restart. How do you feel about your driver's chances? Well, I like our chances. We've had a good car all day. Tyler's been doing a phenomenal job all day. I liked where we were at a little bit before this caution, about three and a half, about three and a half second up. But um, the fans will certainly get their money's worth out of this. You know, you got Chase there and AJ, and so it's going to get exciting. Uh, I feel like we got the best driver for it, and this 3G team's been doing great all day long. So hopefully, we can pull this out. There you go, restart with a handful of laps to go. And Steve, I think that's the appropriate term, slugfest. We'll see what happens here. Well, as I look at all the players involved, A.J. Allmendinger comes to mind, right? He's in fourth. Well, this is how he won a year ago. Is It was Hamlin and Briscoe with cars off track, and that's what made the difference. But if you're saying the over-under, I'm taking over five wide on this restart at some point. <laughs> These have been the restarts already today. Seven, eight wide here as they enter turn number one, and there, it's been Calamity Corner. Drivers off course, drivers missing the turn. We saw the big hit by Larson into Ty Dillon. But just trying to funnel seven, eight cars wide down to maybe three can make it through there. Yeah, and there wasn't a trophy hanging right in front of them on this piece. So imagine the intensity you're getting ready to see. And it's no fun. I mean, I, this is from a driver's standpoint, being in the middle of this mess. It's all you can do is drive in there and just be on offense and, and hope it works out. Up in the front, whole different deal. We saw how important it is. We saw earlier Christopher Bell did not get the launch he needs. Chase Elliott right now has got to find a way to enter at least side by side into turn one with Reddick. Yeah, I don't think anybody outside of maybe the guys on the front row get through this first turn without some sort of contact. So you got to kind of expect it and be ready, be on the defense. I'd rather be lining up in the row that Reddick's in. You've got a lot of room down on that inside line, and that outside line, you're really vulnerable to what's happening underneath you into turn one. One of the other things that could come into play. On you. This might not be the last caution. <laughs> Three laps to go. And we know everyone's been fighting for track position up to this point, but now, with just three more times around, how aggressive will they get? A little contact already right there with the nine and the eight. The nine has the better restart. Chase Elliott almost a clear of the eight car. Eight's going to try to outbreak him down here into breaking zone. All right, just one your left, one on your right now. Middle, 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 middle. A lot middle. of contact and around those left, two left, cars, left. three cars now around. The nine car, Chase Elliott has spun out. 24 of William Byron also has been around. And now, Eric Jones in the 43 goes around. Truex, Dillon. All right, keep going. Austin Dillon in the three, Truex. stops in the gravel. Truex with a flat left front tire. Can he get out of that gravel? If Dillon doesn't get it fired back up and going, 
So far, he's still sitting there, guys. Hasn't moved yet. That's going to be another caution. He's, he's trying stuck. to back up, but he can't. He's stuck. He's gonna, stuck. This is going to have to be a yellow. NASCAR's going to give him as much time as possible. But at some point, the cars are going to go speed through there. There you go. There's, There's the, the yellow. Caution. And we'll have another restart. I don't think Slugfest was, was even aggressive. I know. I thought you were putting it lightly when yeah. you said that. I mean, it was just... Uh, I, I'm going to have to watch this a few more times, Rick, to see exactly what happened. Watch well, the 22. Yes, yeah. exactly. All the way on the bottom. That just forces everybody into five wide, running into each other. Now, the chase in, uh, in the 24, that was ahead of all that. Let's see what happened with those guys. Chase oh, gets... Oh, yeah. yeah. 12 gets into chase a little bit. Unintentional contact there between friends, but... Chase loses all that track position. Derek Jones around. Martin Truex Jr. a lot of damage. The three, Dylan bringing out the caution as he's high centered in the gravel. Oh, so if we look at the two leaders, the eight and the nine, right here, the 12 gets in, the 24 hits the 12. He barely catches the right rear of the nine and around the nine goes. And, and then he catches the 24. Almendinger comes through scot free. Yeah, let's focus on the front for this one. <laughs> we'll go to the middle <laughs> later. Yeah, 24 and a 12, a little bit of contact with the nine. And there's Almendinger. He came out of that in second. Cars going through the grass. Truex has the left front tire issue back there. It's riding on the 14 car. There's just too much to cover. Oh. I mean, the truth is, it's just, you know, it's just no respect given to each other, to be quite honest. And it's just, it's so frustrating as a driver. You can do absolutely nothing wrong and just around you go. People making a five wide, six wide. The problem is, Junior, if you're not on offense, you get run into from behind. So the goal, like, you, you get to the point when you've done this long enough, you see the damage on William Byron's car that you're like, hey, I'm going to wreck somebody instead of getting wrecked on these late restarts on these road courses where we've got these nine degree turns in turn one, and it's just so frustrating. At some point, you'd be better off to go straight, go through the access road, and just blend over here. We saw Randall Burnett, crew chief for the eight, Tyler Reddick, scratching his forehead, knowing that. They had a great restart. He was able to get out front, but he's going to have to do it again. You see the three of Dylan now rolling again, the reason for the caution, and bringing quite a bit of gravel out on to the racetrack. Well, it's you guys' point, right? You have to be on offense, but like even Logano, when he hangs a right, I mean, he has to get back to the left side of the curb, and, and there's just no room for a race vehicle there, so he has no choice but to just kind of start squeezing people left. They'll go to work on the 24 as William Bryant Byron with a lot of damage on that car. And it came from right here. The hourglass just didn't have enough room for all the pieces of sand. Caution is out once again here from Indianapolis Motor Speedway, which means we will see another restart with less than five laps to go in this race. Tyler Reddick is your leader, but look at those fourth and fifth place positions. That's the one of Ross Chastain and the 99 of Daniel Suarez. Both track house cars currently running in the top five. Now, if you'll remember, both track house racing drivers earned their first wins this season, both of which were on road courses. We've only seen three road courses this year. Two of them went to track house racing. Can they take a third? Less than five laps to go here from Indianapolis Motor Speedway.
next Sunday on USA Cup Series Racing from Michigan International Speedway. That race coverage beginning at 3 p.m. Eastern. Big two-mile oval there in Michigan. Make sure to stay with us right here until 6 o'clock as we will have all the post-race action. And then post-race will move over to Peacock, and you can continue to watch the NASCAR America post-race show. Again, more driver interviews, race analysis, and will we see another celebrating A.J. Allmendinger? He's going to have another shot at it here as he will restart second to Reddick. Ryan Blaney, again, the older tires, but right there with the track position. Ross Chastain, one of the more aggressive drivers, is up inside the top four. Parker. Well, guys, we're here on board with A.J. You can see how hot he is underside that helmet. We've heard from him how hot it is. Take a listen to his latest radio. I need Gatorade. Ice bags, everything. Oh, yeah, we got you. Uh, just hang in there. I know you're battling for us. No matter what happens, did all you could here. Right, you see there he has no water, and guys, it's something I missed. He's actually been wearing a cool suit. Well, it has not worked since the start of this race. So I've worn one of those, the exact same one that he wears. I wore it at Coda and had that same issue back at Coda, and it's like wearing a trash bag. You have uh, plastic tubes all around you. It makes you so much hotter in that race car. He's also out of water here, and that cool suit isn't working, so put it in a serious effort, Marty. Parker, when that caution came out, first words from Randall Burnett to Tyler Reddick, save fuel. So talking to the team, they feel like they are good for one overtime finish. They're good for two overtime finishes. It's close, so three might be very difficult. And I only bring that up, Steve. You know, you've sat on the top of the box here before. Remember that Casey Kane race a few years ago? I think it ended in dark. And I don't know how many overtime finishes there were that day. And with the chaos we've seen on these restarts, that is certainly on Randall Burnett's mind right now. Well, it's absolutely. And you see the lap since last pit. You know, Bub Wallace down there in 10th has a couple extra laps over Reddick. Joey Logano has an extra lap. He's run 32. Uh, and then you start to see some guys that have entered the picture who have pitted recently. Oh, oh, boy. Stenhouse, Custer, Bell. So, yeah, it's, uh, there's no doubt someone's going to get spun around. The question is, do they end up in the gravel or not? I think that's really the only question mark. Well, Steve, have we seen it before? Yes, we have seen this before. A.J. Allmendinger a year ago when the 14 of Chase Briscoe spins the 11, who was the race leader at the time, out. And then he has to stop because of penalty. That gave A.J. Allmendinger the perfect opportunity. He took advantage of it. Tyler Reddick, definitely experienced on road courses at Road America earlier this year. He was able to get by the nine. And Tyler Reddick gets the win. We saw one restart already out of Reddick. It was an impressive one. He was battling side by side with Chase Elliott. Now, he will have to battle with A.J. Allmendinger, who will be beside him. You see the road course winners already this season. Ross Chastain, Daniel Suarez, Tyler Reddick. First cup wins for all three of those. Look at the opportunity that's presented to three of these names, right? Chastain and Suarez back inside the top five. McDowell sixth. Todd Gilliland, we talked about the weekend he was having. He's currently in the eighth position. This could be a career day for Todd Gillen. Harrison Burton has somehow kept the fenders on and everything straight. The 21 actually looks pretty good of all cars. Very little damage on the 21 inside the top 10. And then Stenhouse, LaJoy. Uh, there's cars up here that have a chance. You know, Ricky Stenhouse, a top 10 at a road course. I guarantee if you'd have offered that to him this morning, he'd have just got on the plane and went home. I love but the optimism. Absolutely. I love your optimism, but we're about to send them all back down that I funnel. know, but that's why I got all the names you in remember, case they didn't you know come out. the bad funnel that is down in turn <laughs> one? We're about to have to send them all through there again. The funnel of pain. <laughs> uh, well, that's why I tried to get all the names in, just so where'd they go? The funnel of pain. Dave. Oh, this driver doesn't mind a little contact. Ross Chastain has the one car in the fourth position, and I was just looking at it and thinking to myself, he started 21st. You just don't know on these road courses how it is going to turn out. It can go so crazy. So a 21st starting spot, not bad as long as you have the car under you. And as crew chief Phil Surgeon told me this morning, you've got a driver who likes to slide the car around. These cars tend to reward that, he said, and I think Ross is going to have a good day. He is so far, Marty.
Dave, we told the story about how Tyler Reddick is leaving Richard Childress Racing to go to 2311 Racing in 18 months. Yes, 2311, he'll drive for them in 2024. But you have to give credit to Randall Burnett, Steve, because he, you know, he said there was a couple weeks of anger, no doubt about it. Everybody was kind of mad that Tyler decided to make the move and announce it before the playoff started. But he gathered his guys together, and he realized when he's looking at everybody in the room, he said, everybody here is a veteran crew member. You've been through all this. A lot of you were here when Kevin Harvick left Richard Childress Racing, when Clint Boyer left Richard Childress Racing. Let's show up and be professionals. And then they go out and finish second at Pocono. Here they are with a shot to win the race. Steve, as a crew chief, it is your job to lead your group, no matter what the situation is. And Randall Burnett's done a terrific job of that with the situation with Tyler Reddick. Well, when you look at Randall's situation, right, his career is going to be uh, at a turning point as well. I don't know what his contract status is, but Tyler Reddick and Randall have found success in the Xfinity Series. They moved together to Sundays on purpose. Um, and, and, you know, way back when we first started seeing Reddick and his aggression, a lot of us questioned it. I questioned it when he's there rim riding the top at Miami. But Randall Burnett never did. They had this kind of, like, just a, an understanding. I don't know if I'm going to call it a father-son, but there was definitely some mentoring from the pit box that Reddick was comfortable to receive. So you'd have to ask yourself, you know, if I'm 2311, I want to know what his deal is. I mean, I think 2311 has some great people, but in 18 months when Reddick's coming over, why not bring the guy? You know, you love Reddick for who he is. Well, the same crew chief has been on the box for a lot of this success. I would try to drag him with him. Maybe some ant acid for Randall Burnett as well as <laughs> he has he has looked like this has been a very tough end to this race Parker. Right and you speak about tension well the tension of winning down here for the 16 pit of AJ Allmere Matt Colley the owner of this car is pacing back and forth down here in their pit as you see right there just in this other pit beside them walking back and forth back and forth just simply lost in thought of thinking about maybe getting a second win here at the Brickyard in a row and actually won yesterday as well so they'd sweep the weekend which would be pretty impressive and for this full now full-time cup operation last year they were just part-time this would be a huge win if AJ can pull it off yeah and Parker only once has a driver swept a Xfinity Series race and a cup race weekend at a road course and it was back in 2015 Watkins Glen Joey Logano was the driver that had done that if he sweeps it I brought it up earlier next week it's the triple we're gonna put him in an Indy car too so we so could just do it all. So we know what AJ is dealing with. We've gotten the reports how hot he is, cool seats broken, exceptionally hot day. This whole caution made that worse. It is so much hotter when you're under caution. What AJ has to do now, there's no help coming for that. You got to just shut that, shut that helmet, get focused, pay attention to this restart. You got a shot to win a cup race. It's a huge uh, deal. No who's behind you. Look at the exhaustion. You Take can see it in his eyes. Yeah, he knows how big it is, and he will find a way to step up. He see that right there? All right, it's time to go racing. It's time to make something happen. Two laps. Two more times around, and this will be overtime. Overtime presented by Credit One Bank. Reddick's going to want to get a better restart than he did the previous. AJ about ran into the back of the eight right there. Trying to get his tires cleaned off and warmed up. Now they're side by side. Reddick and Almendinger. Almendinger trying to sweep the weekend. Green flag back in the air. Reddick has to go down the block. Better Randy restart Reddick. that time for Reddick, though. He's got a car length on second. Three wide, four wide for second. Here comes around. Austin Cedric, Ryan Blaney sideways in front of the field. Keep taking, keep taking. Side by side up front though. Chastain, he's right there. They're going side by side through the kink. And around goes the one. He's able to get by the eight. Sideways though, that's, that's going to allow Reddick to get around on him. Lost momentum on corner exit. A lot of dirt in the bottom of the tires. Chastain went off the track. Right he did that access road to get back on track. Now, the aid of Tyler Reddick continues to fight him. Is this legal for the one to be up here racing right now? I think NASCAR's trying to figure that out themselves. Reddick trying to work hard to get back by him. He knows he has Austin Cindric behind him. But the one of Ross Chastain was off track. He used the access road after turn one after he missed it. 
Redick fights back. He's going to try to take the outside line. Side by side right here. This is tough sledding to try to make this pass. It's a good position for Redick. He's going to take the lead back. Reddick grabs the lead as he comes back out on the front stretch one more time around. Sender's got to run on the one car. How hard will Chastain push in the braking zone here? He's in position. Reddick slows through one. He's clean. Lots Chastain and Sendrick. We believe second and third, Chastain still unsure. A lot of respect right there in the breaking zone of turn one. Chastain a little defensive into turn four. And if you're Cindric, you really don't know how to treat Chastain. Is he legal? Is he supposed to be there or not? Cindric got really loose there. Chastain driving away from him. Tyler Reddick, what a race he has put together. Through seven. Reddick now with four car links in front of Ross Chastain and Austin Sendrick. This technical section of the Indianapolis road course, Reddick has been perfect. Can he get through 13? For the final time, he does. Oh, he almost misses the corner. Here comes the one of Ross Chastain one more time. Out of 14, Tyler Reddick looking for his second Cup Series win. It's going to come in Indianapolis. All right. Great job, guys. Point execute all day long. Great job, guys. Career best finish for Harrison Burton. Ross Chastain, we have been told by NASCAR, was not allowed to be in that position. He will be penalized. You just won an Indy. You are awesome. And as Marty was mentioning, the team grouping together and Talking about what they needed to do for the rest of this season as well as 2023. Well, the first thing they're going to do is celebrate. That was a tense moment when he was behind the one car and he had the two car, Cindric, right behind him to keep it together, not make any mistakes, and then pass Ross Chastain for the lead. In the second race in a row here where we had a car that wasn't legal, that had a problem in turn one last year. Briscoe through the grass. This year, Chastain on the access road. And there you are not knowing how to deal with them. Like, is, am I racing this guy or not? And I have to tell the folks listening, Steve, you called this one. You said, <laughs> you know what? I might try the access road to see if that would work because of the congestion in one. The crew chief in me says that there's an access road that allows you to have runoff. You don't have to stop because it's a longer distance. So if you were attacked it, you might have a chance to miss the wreck. NASCAR obviously disagrees with that approach. They have taken the one's position away. So I'm going to be very interested to hear their reason. They, they have to officiate the race. I'm glad I'm not on their seat, but uh, I was thinking just not to end up backwards. <laughs> yes. uh, but either way, oh, it didn't matter right because now. the eight of Tyler Reddick wins his first career race at Road America earlier, comes back and doubles down with two wins. No more concerns. You're guaranteed in the playoffs. Impressive drive by Tyler Reddick. Yeah, I think NASCAR is just as happy that Tyler passed Ross Chastain as we are because to have to officiate and throw out the winner oh, definitely. would be a very difficult call. Very difficult. This checkered flag moment brought to you by Advanced Auto Parts. We've heard drivers talk about winning the Daytona 500 would be probably the pinnacle of their career, but winning at the most recognizable and historic racetrack in the world. Definitely right up there. And we'll be able to hear just how important this win is for the eight team and young Tyler Reddick, the 26 year old from Corning, California.
Let's hear from the race winner. We go to Marty. What a drive for Tyler Reddick today, the dominant driver here at Indy. His son, Bo, coming in for a hug. And the crew sprinting up pit road to get to Tyler to celebrate. Second win of the year for this race team and a win at Indianapolis. Crew guys are out of breath. That was about a half mile run for them. Well, I got to know your thoughts when you saw the one. He went through the access road. Were you as shocked as everyone else to see him all of a sudden passing you for the lead? I was like, uh, uh oh. But uh, I mean, that was a scenario that had been talked about. You know, if you get bottled up, what do you do when uh, you know you take the take the the access road? And I could believe he got ahead of me. I was I was kind of waiting to see if he was going to have a penalty because I didn't want to, you know, move him out of the way and and make his make his race worse than than what it was. So yeah, I was really surprised by that. But hey, we made it work. Hats off to Ross for uh, trying to do that. But I'm really glad it didn't end up working out because I've been pretty pissed off. I'm sure you would have not been very happy with that. Tyler, you made the announcement you're moving from RCR. How did this team rally to get back to this point where you could come together and win races again? Well, I mean, we just, we know what we're capable of, and, and we did that at Road America. And certainly it was a little bump in the road, but, hey, we'd, we'd gone out and won a race uh, fair and square a couple weeks ago. And, and, you know, if we change nothing, we just keep working really, really hard. We find a way back to victory lane. And just really glad to be able to do it here in Indianapolis. I mean, this is one really special place to race and really excited to kiss the bricks here in a little bit and really excited that we got 3G their win uh, in their hometown. There you go. As a young man growing up on dirt, Dave, he knew open wheel racing. He loves Indianapolis and now he's a winner here. He gets to kiss the bricks. Ross Chastain loves Indianapolis as well, I am sure. And all the places you can race here, you were looking for a spot there at the end. What were you thinking? What do you mean, where? Taking the access road there and, and uh, getting off course there. I'll oh, just try not to be in the carnage there in turn one. I knew we were, I thought we were four wide and uh, was, couldn't go any farther right and uh, just decided to take the, the NASCAR access lane out there. Is that something you and the team had talked about earlier? It's like, that's a great option and it, and it may not cost us anything? No, Dave, no. Uh, just pure reaction there uh, for our Worldwide Express Chevy. It's, uh, I had took it in practice on ax, like just overshooting turn one and um, you know where this where they're at right and, and 12 you have to go around the, the loop there and there is uh, around the poles so um, yeah just went, went to not get hit and merge back on where I merged All right, a strong day ends not the way that Ross wanted it to natural reaction there guys just getting out of the way you know we when we saw that replay the one slowed down before he came back out onto the track. He was on the access road. He slows down before yeah. he comes back out in front. There was an attempt in this braking zone. He, he's braking. All right. Then he finally says, you know what? I'm not going to go in there with these guys because we see what happens. I mean, he kind of foresaw all this action right here not wanting to be a part of that. Yeah, and I think he slowed down here because he had to make the corner. Yeah. I don't think he was slowing down to try to merge into Reddick. He just had to make the corner. We're going to look at it again and more drivers that we will hear from. We're here on NBC until the top of the hour. Make sure to stay with us for more driver interviews, more celebration from the Indianapolis road course for Tyler Reddick getting his second career Cup Series win. Sun Bo celebrating with him at the Brickyard. No, I'm trying to talk about with Sean. Tyler Reddick is officially your winner, but there you see the 16 of AJ Allmendinger immediately needing medical attention as he got out of the race car. AJ finished this race in the fourth position. Now we heard AJ actively over the radio complaining about the heat in his cockpit. Now unsure why he was maybe experiencing higher temperatures than other drivers. I'm sure that's something that the team will look into. But again, AJ immediately got out of the car and collapsed to the ground. He seems to be doing okay here as he's getting some water, some towel and some medical attention.
attention. Another update though here as their checkered flag has fallen, I'm getting word that there is a potential penalty for the one of Ross Chastain. Now Ross finished the race in the sixth position, but if you saw on the final lap there, he did blow through that first turn, which is an on-track penalty. So still waiting exact information and more uh, uh, information from NASCAR with a few more details as to what that penalty will look like. But as of right now, Chastain finishing sixth. I'll keep you updated on where that lands. Team owner, Andy Petrie, uh, part of this celebration. We're going to be with you until 6 o'clock here on NBC. And then Peacock at 6 o'clock. Make sure to join us there for the NASCAR America Post Race Show as it will continue. Driver interviews and race analysis. And we've talked about what a tough run it has been for the 16 who had no way to keep himself cool no hydration he literally falls out of the car at the end of this race his wife there yeah i, I would hate to speak for you junior but i think it's fair to say we've both been in this situation before and it's a horrible feeling when you get that hot you get out and you think there's immediately you're going to feel better. You don't. It just takes a while to recover from it. Almendinger ended up seventh in this race after Chastain and Austin Dillon have been put back in the positions that NASCAR has deemed for them. Look at the playoff standings. And I'm guessing Ryan Blaney and Martin Truex Jr., if they can't get a win, the next best thing is somebody who already has a win gets to victory lane. Yeah, so I think pay attention to the playoff points. Tyler Reddick gaining more playoff points. We also have another road course before the playoff start. Watkins Glen could go there and get some more if he doesn't get. You know, he got a second place finish at Pocono. Real potential for this eight car to go deep into the playoffs. Hey, you talk about surprise winners and Harrison Burton, Todd Gilliland, Bubba Waltz, all the top five. You make one of them the winner. This is a whole different playoff conversation. So one of the races where it could have happened behind some of these guys, Watkins Glen still out there. And then don't forget Daytona to end the regular season. Bubba Wallace, the best Toyota, finishing in the fifth position on this race. Michael McDowell, Cole Custer with a ninth place finish. First top ten for Cole Custer in a long time. So he's able to get into the top ten. And you see Austin Sendrick coming over here to congratulate Tyler Reddick. Sendrick finishing in second today here at Indianapolis. What a day it's been. More NASCAR coverage is always available on NBCSports.com. Continued post-race coverage available now on Peacock. Coming up next on NBC, it's local news, except on the West Coast. An incredible crossover weekend. IndyCar Series, the Xfinity Series, and the Cup Series, all right here at the famous Indianapolis Motor Speedway. In the end, it was Tyler Reddick with an incredible drive. He wins at Indianapolis. Well, the checkered flag has fallen, and that concludes our weekend here from Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Tyler Reddick gets his second Cup Series win of his career and the second win on a road course at that. With that, four races left here in the regular season for the NASCAR Cup Series, and the action continues this weekend from the Irish Hills of Michigan. I'm Jesse Punch here from Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Thanks so much for keeping up with me all day, race fans. See you next time. Copyrighted telecast may not be reproduced, retransmitted, or used in any form without the authorized written consent of NASCAR Broadcasting. NASCAR would like to thank all of our fans for your support, and we hope you enjoyed today's broadcast.